Guys, here with a new video for the channel. I hope you like it. And if you like it, don't forget to leave your powerful like Supreme God level, comment, and subscribe. Now, without further ado, get comfortable. Let's begin. After the end of the Tournament of Power, all the universes were in a great peace. However, a new danger was approaching. That's right, this danger was only for the two most powerful warriors, for Son Goku of Universe 7, who was able to reach the Ultra Instinct, and Jiren, the mortal who overcame the power of his God Destroyer. In Universe 7, everyone was Beerus, talking about everything that had happened in the Tournament of Power, and the amazing power that Son Goku possessed. Mr. Beerus, are you afraid of Mr. Goku? You being the most powerful destroyer god. Of course I'm not afraid of Son Goku, but the capacity with which he advances is incredible. Even us gods who train for millions of years can't advance with such ease. Don't worry, Mr. Beerus. After all, Mr. Goku has a kind heart and will never be able to do something that will harm all the universes. But at that very moment, the most powerful beings of the realm of everything had appeared in front of both deities. That's right, both Xenosama, Daishanka, together with her guardians, would stand in front of Whis and Beerus. Daishanka-sama, Xenosama, it's a pleasure to have you in my humble planet. Tell me, what can I do for you? In the words of Whis, they're right. That saying Goku ends with the 12 universes are very unlikely, but... At that moment, Xenosama would begin to speak. We must end the lives of Son Goku of Universe 7 and Jiren of Universe 11. They're extremely dangerous subjects and we cannot allow them to remain alive. Beerus and Whis would be very surprised by the words of Xenosama. But isn't Goku his best friend? Why does he want to end his friend's life? Do we have two alternatives or end the life of both subjects or seal them in the room of the Fallen Kings? It is said that being locked in the room of the Fallen Kings is much more suffering than death itself, but what is the reason for all this, Xenosama? You must not know it, but above us, there are also much more powerful beings that even if all the universes were united, we wouldn't be able to face them. That's right. An extremely powerful god that has observed the whole tournament of power and has given the order to finish with both subjects or seal them in the dimension of the fallen kings. It's that that's impossible, and beings much more powerful than the Xenosama. For that same reason we must finish with both subjects, because if we reveal ourselves to that deity, you'll finish with all of us. At that place, the beings of the king of everything would leave again to their palace, leaving both deities of the Universe 7 surprised. After only a couple of hours, Daishenkin had requested an emergency meeting with all the gods, who came quickly. When they arrived, they all bowed. Gods, you must be wondering the reason for the emergency meeting. I'll be very quick and precise. The reason is to hunt the mortals, Goku and Jiren. All the gods would be amazed to know that, thanks to them, they were able to return to life. Daishenkin sama what's the reason for this great news? A being much more powerful than us has observed both subjects, and it seems that both warriors are extremely dangerous for all universes. But Daishenkin sama both subjects have fought for their ideals. They are the only thing Goku wants is to become more powerful, and Jiren wants to revive his family. I agree with Gold Champa. Even though I'm not his guardian angel, my sister Vados has trained him in a great way to know about good and evil. This is not a request. It's an order. Both subjects must be annihilated or we'll all die without being able to do anything. All the gods were silent for a few minutes. However, the god Beerus would take a step in front of everyone. I fear the power of my warrior, but I'll not be the one to lead him into a trap or betray him. You, Xenosama, can erase me if you wish, but I'll not participate in this. I never thought I would say the same thing, but don't count on me either. I won't betray Jiren. 
If that's what you both have decided, you'll be eliminated at this very moment. No die, just leave them on the verge of death. And at this very moment, teleport Goku and Jiren to a planet where they'll be able to defend themselves. So wouldn't it be better to finish them off without them noticing us? Betraying my best friend feels like scum. At least let them defend themselves. Daishenka would obey the king of everything he had ordered. At that moment of raising one of his arms, Jiren, who was meditating, would appear on a planet as well as Goku, who was training. Both subjects were surprised. Hey, what's happening? I was training. Something bad is about to happen. I can feel it in the air. Daishenka would appear in front of the two guys. Goku Saiyan from Universe 7 and Jiren from Universe 11. Both of you will be eliminated when you break the rule of exceeding the power of a destroyer god. Goku would be very surprised by what Daishank had said, but B apparently there is such good warriors that even their gods refuse to participate in this hunt. At that moment, Beerus and Vermouth were on the ground very badly wounded and on the verge of death. At that moment that Goku would approach, Daishank would have turned them into ashes. Why are you doing this, Daishank and Sama? And does my friend Zeno-sama know? Of course I know, Goku, but the decision has already been made. Gods, attack! All the remaining gods went to attack since they knew that if they refused, they would be annihilated quickly. Goku at that moment would pass to the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, increase 20 times, while Jiren would increase his power to the maximum. We're not going to die so easily. You must be able to defeat us. I won't let them finish me off without avenging my family first. Both subjects began to exchange blows with the gods, however it was noticed that Goku was most injured. That's right, Goku was able to overcome the gods when he activated the Ultra Instinct with the Superior Saiyan Blue, but still no match for the gods. Son Goku, concentrate. You're capable of activating that state again, otherwise we'll die on this planet. Meanwhile on planet Earth, Vegeta would feel the immense power of Goku. This isn't training. Kakarot's power is overflowing. He's about to die. Vegeta would summon Shenron at that moment. As Bulma had the seven dragon's balls, he wasted no time in doing it. Tell me, what is your wish? I wish that you'd teleport me to where Kakarot's fighting. At that moment, Shenron's eyes would shine and Vegeta had disappeared from that place. When Vegeta arrived, he would observe Kakarot being tortured by some of the gods. While Jiren was only able to defend himself, Vegeta would remember the words of his master Whis and the god Beerus. Flashback. Vegeta, you possess a little bit of evil in your heart, but it will be impossible for you to achieve the Ultra Instinct. You will be able to achieve the Ultra Ego. The Ultra Ego is a state beyond a destructive god. You dominate the destructive energy in its totality. And flashback. Vegeta at that moment would enter a state of anger. Beginning to increase all his power, the gods would notice the same Vegeta. At that moment, two of them would go to attack. However, the purple aura would drive them away. That's right, Vegeta was accessing his new transformation. After a great curtain of smoke, you could see the Prince of the Saiyans in his Ultra Ego transformation. This power is incredible. I can't believe it. I feel that I'm able to finish with any subject that's put in front of me. Finish with the life of that Saiyan in the same way. So I was right. It wasn't a training session. They really want to end the life of Kakarot and Jiren's insect. Vegeta at that instant, without wasting time, would launch a powerful attack towards Goku, which the gods would receive most of the damage to be holding it. Goku would fall to the ground badly wounded. Kakarot, it's not your time to take a break. So stand up like an honorable Saiyan that you are. Two of the gods would go again against Son Goku, however, Goku at that moment was able to dodge both blows. That's right, Goku had accessed the perfect Ultra Instinct with which he began to end the lives of the gods. After approximately 45 minutes of battle, the only god that remained alive was Champa. But to everyone's surprise, Daishenken would end his life with a lightning bolt. We don't need cowardly gods. We will call new gods and they'll be more powerful. As they turn out to be a nuisance, they'll be condemned to the dimension of the fallen kings. Daishenken at that moment would begin to approach the two subjects, but without wasting time. The three warriors attached and attack, but in vain since the power Daishenken surpassed them by dozens of times. Or is it better to end his life? 
Vegeta, realizing that Daishinkan had already invoked the portal of the dimension, saw it quickly. That dimension is similar to the time room, so I'm 100% sure Kakarot's insect and Jiren would get out of that place. All the warriors would continue to give shrapnel of blows to Daishinkan, however, they weren't able to give him a scratch. At that moment, Vegeta would communicate telepathically with Jiren. Jiren, go to the dimension that this guy says, because if he kills you, no one will be able to revive you. In that place, you have a better chance of living. Say him by the name of Vegeta. Are you going to sacrifice yourself? Of course I am, insect. If Kakarot falls a battlefield, no one will be able to stop these guys. At that moment, Jiren, with the help of his visual power, would create a great light, which would leave Daishenka without vision for a few seconds. At that moment, Jiren would take Goku with his maximum power, entering that portal. When Daishenka regained his sight, he'd observe how the Prince of the Saiyans was carrying a bestial power. I'll not die without scratching you. Let's see if you're able to withstand an explosion of all my power. Sorry, Bulma. Trunks. My little daughter. I hope to see you again soon. At that moment, a great explosion would be created in the entire planet where they were. The explosion was so devastating to be with Hawkeye energy that was even able to make Daishinkan bleed. That's right, at that moment, the last scream of the Prince of the Saiyans was able to be heard throughout the universe. The proud warrior who gave his life for his rival and a warrior of the Universe 11 had disappeared. At the moment of finishing the explosion, which would leave no trace of the Saiyan Prince, Daishinkan would appear with a few wounds, but nothing serious. So, both subjects have decided to enter the dimension of the Fog Kings. That would be much worse, since they have chosen death. At the moment, Daishinkan and both Xenosamas would return to their palace. Meanwhile, in the dimension, both had arrived to a completely white place, very similar to the Room of Time. But the pressure that this place emanated was extremely incredible, being so much that even for Goku and Jiren, it was very difficult to move. Why the hell did you do that, Vegeta? I swear I'll avenge your death. Those bastards will pay for it. No, if you can get out of this place, because the pressure of the powers that we're feeling are extremely terrifying. This is a good place to die, but it's also a perfect place to become warriors of great power. I agree with you, Goku. It's time for the most powerful mortals of the 12 universes to break through the barrier and ascend to the divine world. I Goku and Jiren had arrived at the dimension to which Xenosama had sent them. That's right, both warriors had been sealed in the dimension of the Fallen Kings. In this dimension, they were sent to the kings of the hole that contained a power similar to a creator god, and they were also very bloodthirsty. Damn it! We haven't met any of the kings of the hole, but the pressure of this simple place crushes me! That doesn't matter. You're Goku. We must be able to resist and get out of this damn place. Because if we die here, the Vegeta Saiyan will have died in vain. We'll not allow that. We'll avenge Vegeta's death! Goku and Jiren at that moment, they were about to start fighting to increase their powers and make their bodies more resistant. A guy would appear in front of both of them who were not able to see who it was since the speed of which he had arrived was incredible. What the hell was that? Was it a rock or a person? At that moment, a great curtain of fire spread all over the place. A female voice came from the fire. Well, well. What do we have here? Is this something you don't see every day? How interesting. Mortals that surpass the power of a destructive god are sealed in this place. Who are you? How do you have so much speed? Honey, I'm the one taking the questions here, not you. For that lack of respect, I'll make you suffer a little bit. Toa, in a matter of milliseconds, had given millions of hit to Jiren, who had not been able to see anything. He would only fall to the ground. Goku had been very surprised, and having activated the Ultra Instinct, he would throw himself against that woman. The demon named Toa would not move from the same place. She had do only dodged each one of his blows. However, when she wanted to hit him, she would be a little surprised. When she realized that the guy had dodged her blow while Toa dodged each one of Son Goku's blows, she would start talking to him. So a mortal is capable of dominating the Ultra Institute, to its maximum expression. This seems more and more interesting to me, but a candidate for the queen of everything is capable of this. 
Toa at that moment would increase her speed 500 times more, with which she was able to give Goku some blows. Superficially, they looked like normal blows, but they had stopped the flow of energy from all his veins. The fact that you have the Ultra Instinct doesn't make you untouchable. I only need to overcome the reaction speed of your own body, and with that, it'll be much easier for me to finish you. Jiren at that moment would be very difficult to, for him to stand up. I don't care if you're a candidate for the Queen at all. We don't plan to die without taking revenge on those bastards. Jiren, in spite of being very hurt and on the verge of death, would launch again to an attack, being knocked out with a single blow. Goku at that moment on the ground and on the verge of death would be able to observe Vegeta. I'm sorry, Vegeta. I won't be able to avenge you. I'm sorry, Saiyan Prince. You don't have to worry, Kakarot. Today is not the day of your death. Toa was approaching both of them with the intention of absorbing all their powers. However, at that moment, a much more terrifying pressure would appear in front of them. That's right, leaving Goku out of combat. That's right, the pressure of a Saiyan that had surpassed the combat mode of a king was amazing. That's right, the Saiyan king would appear in front of Toa, who would recognize him immediately. Yamamoshi-sama, uh, what are you supposed to do in this place? You're an honorable warrior, and you never interfere in the territories of other kings. You're right, Toa. How can I let you wipe out my offspring? No matter who they are, the rules are clear, and they are for everyone. No matter who you are, so in the most polite way, I ask you to please leave. I don't want to fight. So after thousands of years, you think you're powerful enough to fight me? Don't make me laugh. You're still a piece of trash compared to me. Toa angrily launched into an attack, managing to land a sneaky punch on Yamoshi's face. How about that? How so fast that he didn't even have time to react. Toa's smile would be erased from her face as she observed how Yamoshi had not moved a single centimeter. That's right, Toa's powerful blow had not been able to move Yamoshi even a millimeter. In this instant, I'll make you remember the fear that you had on me millions of years ago. I hope you're prepared, Toa. Yamoshi at that moment would begin to increase his power. Even loud screams could be heard all around. Powerful Saiyan King Yamoshi was raising his battle level so high that he was able to make the dimension itself collapse. That's enough. If you can withstand fighting with my 25% power and you can withstand for 10 minutes, you can do whatever you want with these Saiyans. Don't underestimate you, you bastard. Use all your power. I was a candidate for queen of everything, so I won't let you play with me. Yamoshi at that moment would contact a powerful blow to her stomach, which was about to fall to the ground, but Yamoshi would hold her head. You're a candidate for queen of everything. I was the king of everything, who was able to overcome the barrier between a king and a creator god. You know that I was feared, even by the highest level creator gods, so you have no chance against me. Yamoshi at that moment would charge a large sphere of energy, throwing it at Toa, which would quickly take distance and launch a beam of energy. The clash of both attacks was incredible, but the distance was noticeable, since Yamoshi was just playing with Toa. Just because I don't want to kill you, I'll let you attack me, as I am aware that your attack won't be able to do anything to me. The powerful combined attack of your attack and Toa's attack would hit him directly. That's what you get for underestimating me, you bastard! So die for being a miserable, disgusting insect! Throughout the smoke screen, a laugh would ring out. Ha 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 ha! Did you think you could beat me because of your power? <laughs> Remember that you're nothing compared to me. Yamoshi at that moment would give her a strong blow to her neck, leaving her out of combat. At that moment of approaching both subjects, he would realize that both possessed an impressive power having the potential to overcome a king of all. However, he would realize that inside the body of Goku, a powerful compared to a king of all, with its maximum power, even the cursed techniques was not able to defeat him. That's right, the power that Goku hid was incredible. This Saiyan's very interesting. Trained properly, he'll be the one to destroy this old dimension, which was created by the power of the four gods. Yamoshi would take both subjects, leaving his territory, because in spite of Yamoshi being the most powerful subject of that dimension, there were beings that if joined together were able to even put Yamoshi into great trouble. 
At that moment of arriving to the destination, Yamoshi would transmit them a little of his power. However, both warriors did not wake up, but Yamoshi, having much more experience than both, would know that both warriors were already completely healed. So Yamoshi would hit them with a bestial force in their stomachs, making them both wake up with a strong pain. Ouch! What happened? Where are we? Are we dead? I doubt that we're dead because the pressure still remains and that blow gave us was merciless. You're right. You're not dead. You're still sealed in the dimension of the Fallen Kings. To get out of this place, you must increase your power to the limit. Are you a Saiyan? This is incredible. So, how did you end up in this place? It's a long story and that's no time for that. So I hope you're ready, because from now on, I'll personally train you. I appreciate that you saved us, but the power you emanate's not that powerful. Even the woman from before surpasses you. Even I think I'm capable of defeating you. Yamoshi, without saying a word, was able to make Jiren feel agonizing pain. You can't feel my pressure or presence because I don't want you to. But my power is much greater than the power of Toa that possesses. Goku would be very surprised to know that such a powerful warrior would train them. Yamoshi would stop releasing all his pressure, making Jiren able to move again. Now that you know how great my power is, I hope you don't trust me because I'll make you suffer like you had no idea. Attack! I'll not use my pressure. Goku and Jiren went on the attack. Goku at that moment was able to access the Ultra Instinct again. Starting to fight against Yamoshi. Meanwhile, outside of that dimension, Daishenken had gathered the Super Dragon Balls, reviving all the Destroyer Gods, but this time with a small change. That's right, they had been revived with negative energy and hatred towards mortals. Gods, you know what your mission is, to finish with every being that is a threat to our multiverse. As, As you, you command, command Daishenken-sama, Zero-sama. All the gods would leave to their universes, beginning to finish with each warrior that they believed to be a danger. At that moment, a warrior of the race of Frieza would appear in front of all. At that moment of doing it, all the beings of the kingdom of the whole would make a bow. Sir Ryui, what is the honor of having you in our multiverse? I come to congratulate you since you have successfully sealed both subjects. With this, we will return to be the best multiverse, and we will finish with all the beings that get in the way. I'm very happy that we have done our job well. Very soon, I'll be able to regain my omnipotence and omnipresence to become a creator god again. Any other requests you have, sir? For now, there are none. Just keep everything under control, since the last creator gods are about to wake up. Try to keep everything going as it has been so far. You don't have to worry about that, Ryui-sama. We'll do it perfectly. I count on you, because if you fail, I myself will take care of finishing you simple worms. A golden light would leave all of the, that multiverse. That's right, this guy named Ryui was responsible for sealing of both warriors. My lord, Ryui's power is so great that even if we had revealed ourselves, he would have killed each one of us. I know, Dai, but I feel like scum for betraying my best friend, and even injecting negative energy into the spiritual sea of each destroyer god. Returning to the dimension of the kings, both subjects were fighting with King Yamoshi. However, in that time they had been training, they were not able to give him any blow. That's right, Yamoshi's speed was much faster than both subjects. That's all for today. If we want their power to increase, they must also have rest. Meanwhile, with Toa, she had already recovered by returning to her territory. However, she was furious at being completely humiliated, but at that moment, a great energy would stand in front of her. Do you want to have the necessary power to kill Yamoshi? Accept this power. You won't regret it. I don't care what it is. I want to finish with that damned Yamoshi. I won't let him make fun of me. A great amount of energy would begin to enter Toa's body, which would begin to scream all over the place, since the power that it would gave off was incredible. So much was the power that even her body would explode for some dozens of times. But the energy of before was in charge of restoring it. After hundreds of explosions, Toa would appear. This power is amazing. This is the power of a creator god. In a part of all that dimension, an extremely incredible power had appeared. However, in a few seconds it had disappeared again. 
That's right, the power of Toa had been felt by all the fallen kings, and it would call the attention of Yamoshi, who would change his expression to a very serious and cold one. The power that was felt a few seconds ago was an incredible power. Even with my maximum power, I don't know if I could defeat that power. Is something wrong? Your work has changed completely! No, it's nothing to worry about, but you must become much more powerful. The power that you now possess is comparable to that of a guardian angel. That's not enough, we must break all our limits to be able to finish off all the bastards who made fun of us. At that moment in Goku's mind, he was able to observe Xenosama. That's right, out of the dimension, Xenosama had used some mental power to contact Goku. Friend Goku, I know you must hate me now, but you don't want anything to do with me, and you really had no choice. I feel like scum for doing this to you. My friend Zeno, but tell me, what happened? Well, why did you do all this? What do you mean you had no choice? Above us, there are the kings of everything who have been able to take their power to the limit. But even above them, there are the creator gods, which are also divided into scales of power. Are you implying that a creator god has given the order to finish us off? That's right, and if we refuse it, it would destroy all the 12 universes. I'm so sorry, my friend. For that reason, I've decided to abandon 75% of all my power. Only you can finish with the new enemies that are approaching. Despite being in another dimension, a power would begin to enter all over Goku's body. That's right, Goku's power was growing rapidly. Even with Xenosama's power, Goku was able to access his Ozaru form without the need of his tail. But while he was in transition, his tail would appear. That's right, Goku was destroying everything around him. However, he was able to observe Xenosama in the middle of all his destruction. My friend Goku, I trust you with my power. I'm so sorry, you only deserve to be a king at all. Goku in that instant would regain consciousness by accessing the Super Saiyan Phase 4, but his hair was an angelic silver color, leaving Yamoshi and Jiren surprised, since Son Goku's power had increased in an amazing way. Goku's power has increased too much. I can't even calculate it. But with that power, he's capable of defeating a king in his fighting form. Goku in that instant would throw a great sphere of energy towards Jiren. That's right, Xenosama, knowing that he was with Goku, had also sent some power to Jiren. Not as much as to Goku, but Jiren in the same way began to increase his power in such an incredible way that it would make everything around him tremble. That's right, the power that he was releasing was equally amazing. Unlike Goku, Jiren was not having any transformation in his body, was dominating all that power. However, he was becoming much slower because of the excess energy. The power is incredible but I feel as heavy as a planet, and since I don't have the ability to transform, it's much more difficult. You don't have to worry about that, since that's what I'm training them for. I don't know where they got so much power from, but it's time to start training beyond a king at all. The three subjects began to have a great battle, which was capable of shaking some territories of the other kings. Meanwhile, with Toa, she was training in the same way to be able to dominate all the power of that energy. This power is incredible, so this is the power of a creator god. I'll finish with those damn trash. You're not ready yet. Believe it or not, the being that killed my body was that damned Yamoshi. He's not lying when he said that he had all the creator gods were afraid of his power. Is his power even capable of killing a creator god? That's right. The power of that saying is difficult to understand, despite fighting for hours, days, weeks. His power, instead of decreasing, increased as the battle went on. This time it'll be very different. I'll do it for you, Master, and also out of pride. I'll not forgive you for the beating you gave me last time. If you really want to do it, you must take your body to the limit, because with the power you have now, Yamoshi is still able to finish you without any effort. Toa at that moment would continue training, knowing that he still lacked the power to be able to make the Saiyan King bite the ground. Returning to the trio of subjects, Goku and Jiren with their new power, they were already able to face Yamoshi. That's right, Yamoshi, despite using his maximum power at his base state, was difficult keeping up with the both of them. What's wrong? Is all that power of a Saiyan King? Jiren would be a little surprised by Goku's words because even though he had increased his power too much, there was still no match for Yamoshi in one-to-one -on -one combat. I can see by possessing all that beastly power, you think you can defeat me. But let's see what you think of this. 
Yamoshi at that moment would begin to increase his power in an incredible way, making everything around him tremble. Yamoshi's power was even perceived by the other fallen kings. The moment Yamoshi was accessing 50% of his glorious power, that's right, at that instant Yamoshi's hair would turn a silver color as well as his eyes, which would leave Goku and Jiren surprised to realize that Yamoshi had access to Ultra Instinct. You should feel lucky, since I was the one who created the Ultra Instinct. In short, my Ultra Instinct is the original one. Goku would be very surprised to hear what Yamoshi said. Goku and Jiren, without caring about what Yamoshi said, would throw themselves against him. But this time, the difference in their powers was as big as the sky and the earth. That's right, Goku and Jiren, despite having all that great power, this time were not able to do what Yamoshi said. This time, they were not able to make a scratch on Yamoshi, who, after a few hits, would leave them wounded on the ground. Goku, despite having the Ultra Instinct in his transformation from Super Saiyan Phase 4, was not able to dodge all of the blows of Yamoshi. That's all for today. Your powers are growing exponentially fast, so you should take a break and get your energy up. Goku and Jiren would begin to rest that day. Meanwhile, outside that dimension, Ryui was very desperate because for a being that was lost omnipotence, it was worse than losing their life. Damn it! If I'm not able to do something, I'll be left without my omnipotence. I have to hurry up on this. I think it's time to absorb all those damned ones. Meanwhile, with Zeno-sama, he was very worried because he had a bad feeling about Ryui. Die. I want you to store 90% of your power in that sphere of divine energy. But sir, if I do that, I won't have enough power to be able to defend us. Even if you have 100% of your power, you'll never be able to confront Ryui. Trust me, Daishenken. All right, my lord. Whatever you say. At that moment, Daishenka would begin to empty all his veins of energy, passing 90% of all his power to the sphere that the king had told him. After only 10 minutes of having finished, Ryu would appear in the kingdom of the whole. Ryui-sama, what's the reason for your visit in the multiverse? They have excellent subordinates, but now that they have finished with that plague, they're no longer useful to me. I'll keep their powers. Ryui would throw himself against Daishenken, starting a battle which clearly showed who had the advantage. At the moment, both Guardians would launch an attack and both Xenosamas, with the power they have left, would merge and access to their form of combat. All were fighting against a single subject, but the result would be the same. So it is, from one moment to another, Ryui would begin to give some great blows to each one of those present, leaving them on the verge of death. Before they die, I want to keep all their powers. I'll create the world that everyone wants. I'll finish with the creator gods and I'll access the Sheikah Galaxy, place of the true gods and not beings like you. Ryui at that moment would begin to absorb the power of each one of those present. Nevertheless, while Ryui absorbed Xenosama, Daishenken would communicate with all the gods telepathically. Gods, I know at this moment all you possess is negative energy, but you must trust us. Abandon all your power and explode. Because if you don't, Ryu will kill you and end your power. And Father, will we do the same, or is our destroyer gods? All of you, create an energy spheres with a meeting point in the realm of all. My energy being more powerful than yours will absorb it and search for a worthy warrior. Understood, Father. In this instant, we'll do it. Ryuji at that moment had finished the life of Xenosama, and his guardians at the moment of heading towards Daishenken was also filling all his spiritual sea, thanks to the power of Daishenken. However, before Daishenken remained, if his valuable energy would curse him and affirm that an extremely powerful subject would avenge them. Ha ha ha! No one has enough power to face me. Now it's time to absorb all the gods and angels. The moment Ryui began to move all through the universes, every god would begin to explode. That's right, the gods had fulfilled Daishenken's last order. Damned priest, they don't believe that because you don't have the power of simple gods and angels you'll be able to defeat me. There are more multiverses and temporal lines. Ryu Furious would rise to the top of that multiverse, creating a great attack, which would have enough power to erase all the multiverse of Xenosama. That's right, a gigantic megaversal explosion was able to be appreciated by all the other kings as a whole. After millions of years, a megaversal explosion has happened again. Who was the guy that had enough power to blow up the entire multiverse? 
the annihilation of a multiverse has a creator god awakened? The other kings would not give any comment on the matter. Meanwhile, returning to the dimension, Goku, who was meditating at that moment, would fall to the ground to his base state. That's right, he felt like an incredible power was crushing him, and he was right. The power of the high priest, the twelve angels, and the twelve gods was entering his body. Yamoshi at that instant would quickly approach Goku, but Goku's body began to expel rays of energy, and at that very moment began to expel an extremely impressive power, leaving all the fallen kings surprised, which would be surprised by the power they felt. What's happening, Goku? It is the power beyond a king, but it's too early. Goku would continue to increase his power like never before, accessing the Ultra Institute again, but this time his power was so much that it would make even Yamoshi tremble. Goku's body was releasing an incredible power, so much that even the dimension of the Fallen Kings was shaking like never before. At that moment, Yamoshi would increase his power to the maximum, accessing the legendary transformation, which was capable of supporting all his bestial power. Yamoshi at that moment would throw himself against Goku, hugging him tightly. Goku, Goku, Goku! React! Don't keep raising your power like that, because if you continue, your body won't be able to support it, and it'll explode, so stop it! Goku, without listening to everything that Yamoshi would say, he would continue raising all his power. That's right, Goku was in a trance mode which was not able to react. Yamoshi, at that moment, would give him a blow with all his power, but to his surprise, Goku would be able to stop his blow with only one of his hands and without any effort. Don't think that you're talking to an amateur. I know the capacity in my body, and it's capable of withstanding this and much more. Have you come to your senses, Goku? Then stop it! Even those amounts of energy are staggering to me, and I wouldn't control them without paying a high price. Goku, unheeding, would continue to accumulate all his power until a huge explosion could be seen in Goku's body, which was still in the Ultra Instinct. But something to differentiate was the incredible pressure that emanated from it. That's right, Goku had been able to control the power of both Xenosamas, Daishenken, and all the other deities of the universe. However, all the power he possessed was not only for Goku, since at that moment all the power of the Destroyer Gods would enter Jiren, beginning in the same way to increase his power in an amazing way, not as much as Goku's, but his power had shot up, that is, he would be compared to the Jiren of some days ago, and with Jiren that absorbed the power of all the gods, the current Jiren would fight with three Daishenkens and defeat them without any difficulty. That is, in the same way his power had reached a level that hardly a mortal or even a god could be able to reach. Mortal of Universe 11, it was never our intention to finish with you, but they were orders from above, and that same guy finished with us, so all the gods trust you with our power. I trust you, Jiren. Prove that you're the being that goes beyond a god destroyer. Jiren at that moment would create a great explosion all over the place, destroying everything in its path. That's right, it'd be much more complicated for Jiren to dominate all the power of the Twelve Gods, but he would succeed. After such an incredible explosion, Jiren could be observed, which was now able to use the destructive energy, protruding from his body the signs of a super god destroyer. That's right, Jiren was able to surpass a normal god destroyer. His power is incredible, and he'll be able to possess the power to finish with the cursed one who sent for our heads. We possess all the power of the twelve universes. That's right, Jiren. No matter who our enemy is, he won't be able to defeat us. Meanwhile, with Toa, she had already mastered all the power that this energy had given her. However, the energy at that moment materialized, giving the silhouette of a man. Toa, now you must train more than ever since the power that both subjects have attained is compared to a creator god of the lowest level. How is it possible that those two mere mortals have attained the power of a creator god? This has to be a bloody nightmare. Although it may seem like a nightmare, it is reality. The power of these two guys would even be able to give me a few scratches. Master, are you still able to defeat them? 
Of course I am. They are at the beginning of a creative power compared to me, who has been in the creative world for millions of years. It would not be so difficult to finish them both. It would be better to finish with them right now, because if we let them increase their power, they will be much more dangerous. You are right, Toa, but you will have to do it yourself, because if the other creator gods feel my power, they will finish me quickly, and I don't want to attract their attention. Why do you say that, Master? Can't you finish them with your base power? Indeed, Toa. With my base power, it would be too complicated for me, and if I release a little of my creative essence, I will be able to call the attention of the other beings. I understand, Master. Don't worry, I will finish with both subjects. I have entrusted you with a part of my power. But not reaching the creative ground, your essence is null. So you can use all that power that I have entrusted you. But do not trust, because the power is great. Returning to both warriors, both would begin to meditate because despite not causing damage with their powers, they felt the body extremely heavy. So it is, and this in the battle would be a great disadvantage. So both decided to meditate to regain their speed and even increase it. Meanwhile, out of the dimension, Xenosama's multiverse was in a complete chaos because there was no divine being to govern it correctly. That's right, after only one week after all the divine beings had died at the hands of Ryui, Xenosama's multiverse would explode, leaving no one alive. At that moment, Mikoshin would realize the annihilation of the entire multiverse. This is bad. If a multiverse has fallen, this can happen to any other multiverse. If it'll be better to inform the Queen of Fire, since she's the most powerful among all the kings of everything. Mikoshin at that moment would begin to fly through all the multiverses, and being a queen of everything, she would have enough power to cross the dimensional barriers without any difficulty. Meanwhile, in a very distant place, we can observe Ryui, who was sitting on his throne with a serious look since he was very thoughtful. Damn it! If I had absorbed the power of all those gods, my power would have risen much higher. But they were able to discover my intentions. At that moment, Ryui was able to perceive how the queen of the whole Mikoshin was heading towards another multiverse. Apparently, with the explosion of Xenosama's multiverse alerting the mighty Mikoshin, she apparently plans to ally herself with the realm of relentless fire. Meanwhile, returning to the two mortals who had overcome the power beyond the power of a king, they had already mastered all their power, since in that dimension time passed in a very different way from the dimension from which they came. That is, that dimension they had already spent approximately 10 years, while outside the dimension only 5 days had passed. In that moment, both warriors would stand up, starting to collapse the whole dimension. That is, in that same instant, hundreds of planets, galaxies would be created, and at the same time destroyed each other. Although both controlled their power, it was almost impossible for them to repress it completely. This is incredible. The power of both of them has risen in an incredible way. I don't think I'll be able to defeat them both at the same time. Yamoshi, we're ready to leave this miserable place. We're counting on you to return to the real world. At that moment, two more warriors would appear in front of everyone. Damn it. I knew you guys were watching us somehow. You better leave or I'll kill each one of you right now. The two warriors that appeared were also kings of great power that had been sealed in that place hundreds of years ago. You must not boast a power which we all have long since surpassed. You were the most powerful fallen king of all, but now your power is diminished in a great way. That's right. You don't have the overwhelming power of before. Or maybe we only have become more powerful. I hope you're prepared for the day of your death. Yamoshi at that moment would increase his power. However, Goku and Jiren would stand in front of Yamoshi. This would be excellent to test our new powers, so you don't have to worry. That's right. We're now the most powerful than you, Yamoshi, and it's our turn to protect you. No, they're not normal warriors that you can face. They have millions of years of more experience than you. Too late. We'll knock them unconscious and finish you off. Then we'll force them to form the portal to get out of this miserable place. That's right. Both guys have the energy of a creator god in their veins, but their power's too weak. And But with that little amount is enough to get out of this place. Goku and Jiren at that moment would observe each other and giving a big smile, both would disappear at lightning speed. 
That's right at that very moment, two great battles never before felt in the whole dimension of the kings was developing. At one point, Goku was able to give a sneaky blow to Yakua, who would fall to the ground, but the power was so much that it would have been dragged a few meters. At that moment, Yakua, furious at the same way, would recover from such a furative blow, being able to give a great blow to the Saiyan. However, at that time, which of Goku had disappeared again? That's right, the speed that Goku possessed at this moment was incredible. Meanwhile, with Ryota and Jiren, both were very even. Well, that was what Ryota believed, since from one moment to another, Jiren would attack, increasing his power, and would create a great fire attack. However, this attack was different, since the power of fire was unreal. Besides mixing the particles in his key, this creating divine fire. Great flames of fire would be seen to be all over the place. Ryota at that moment would increase his power to the maximum to create a barrier with all his key. However, the power of fire was so much that it even cracked the barrier of a super king altogether. What the hell's going on? How can this bastard who barely surpassed king level have all this power? I thought you'd be a great challenge, but you don't have the power to make me fight for real. I only need 34% of all my power. Don't say stupid things, and I swear I'll end your pathetic life. Ryota at that instant would take his energy to the limit. So much was his increase that even his body began to pay the consequences of accessing a power which he didn't fully master. Bloody Spirit Mar! Divine Soul of the King Massacre! At that moment, inside Ryota's body, all his key veins began to pass much more power. Even the base of all of the key began to go so crazy that such a power Ryota was increasing, Jiren would begin to observe how Ryota's body was expelling large amounts of blood. With the activation of that technique, you have sealed your fate. You won't be able to endure it for long. Meanwhile, with Goku's battle, he had also forced Yakua to use the King's Divine Soul, which at that moment was also increasing his power in a very amazing way. At the end, you can observe both warriors who apparently had not changed at all, but at the moment of walking towards them, their footsteps were sinking in the ground, demonstrating the weight of their whole body. At that moment, Ryota, in spite of all the heavenly power that he possessed, would move at a great speed, giving him a great blow to Jiren. But great was his surprise when Jiren had been able to dodge it. I hope you're prepared, simple mortal, and I'll end your pathetic life. I'm not interested in being locked up for the rest of my life. I want to see if you have the power to back up your words. Goku at that moment would stare at Yakuya, who, undeterred by the cold presence of the Saiyan, would launch an attack. That's right, however the result would still be the same. This is something that if I wasn't seeing it from my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Two warriors who have just been promoted to king level are able to face two experts. The battle of the four warriors were in a great destructive point where everything around them was involved in lightning, fire, and even tidal waves. However, after only 10 minutes of battle, the body of both kings was reaching its limit. That is, they were not able to keep up with both warriors. As all their energy as the battle progressed was decreasing contrary to the energy of both warriors, which at every moment of the battle was increasing. That's right, what both warriors needed was to have much more experience in the territory of a king. So facing two subjects which surpassed that power was perfect for them. After seven more minutes of battle, the body of both gods would expel a large amount of blood. That's right, their bodies could no longer withstand the power beyond the kings. At the time of deactivating their techniques, their power would drop in an amazing way. That's right, the power beyond a king had left their bodies with no energy at all. Well, well, what a miserable fate. Without the need for us to end their lives, they'll die, since all their energy veins are totally destroyed. So, bloody spiritual sea. What a striking name. Now, die in their blood, simple cowardly kings who don't have the power to back up their words. At the moment both subjects to move away, Yamoshi would throw them a great energy sphere, finishing with the life of both kings. That's right, since in that state, it was preferable to death. You have achieved great power, but you must not lose your humanity, because if you lose that, you'll lose everything. However, at that precise moment, a gigantic power would be felt all over the place. That's right, the power of a true king was causing havoc in the whole dimension. Even a powerful aura would rise into the sky. Planets, galaxies, and dimensions themselves were cracking from the power that would be perceived. This power is incredible. 
I never knew of the existence of a fallen king with such power. At that moment, even Jiren and Goku were astonished. A great shadow would move at the speed of lightning. But unlike Goku and Jiren, a blood-red lightning could be seen. At that moment, that powerful lightning had been able to send Yamoshi to fly far from that place. And at that moment, a woman would appear in front of everyone. Who are you? And how is it possible for you to master all that power? Your key is extremely great, but I feel like I know you from somewhere. Now you will be my food. Not even the legendary King Yamoshi has the power to face me. I currently possess the power of a creator god. Yamoshi, upon receiving such a furtive blow, would return quickly, realizing the power of that powerful queen. That's right, Yamoshi was the only one who quickly knew who it was, since both had fought for dozens of times. I can't believe the way you look now, Toa. You used to be the most beautiful queen of all. That's what you forced me to do. After interfering in my hunt for those bastards, you understand that I couldn't let you absorb warriors of my own race. Don't worry, since in this place, and now I will absorb them all to go to the other world and be reunited with their pathetic race. Toa at that moment would pounce against the three warriors, who would quickly get on guard. However, the power that Toa had achieved was extremely incredible, being able to grant excellent blows to each one of the warriors. But he had not finished his attack since that moment, he would launch a great fire attack, similar to the one that Jiren used before. That bitch was watching the battle all the time, so long that she was even able to create a technique similar to mine. Your blows have been able to cause me some damage. I hope you're prepared. As well as you, we'll have to increase our power. Goku, Jiren, and Yamoshi, who at that moment began to raise their power in an incredible way, making the whole dimension rumble. So much was their power that they even released the dimension began to crack little by little. Even their key was filtering through the cracks that were being created. Meanwhile, outside the dimension, the powerful Ryui would feel that power which, despite being very minimal, would make him shudder. What is this power? It's almost null, but in spite of that, it's still able to cause me incredible fear. At that moment, when Mikoshin was about to arrive at the realm of the Queen of Fire, a sensation of death was able to be felt in the whole space. However, she wasn't able to feel the power since she was far away from Xenosama's multiverse. What is this sensation of death I feel? Something very bad is about to happen, so I must warn all the other kings urgently. Returning to the battlefield, the four warriors were having a great battle. However, every moment that the battle progressed, Toa's power instead of decreasing was increasing in a great way. Toa, don't be confident. Despite possessing my seemingly unlimited energy reserves, everything has an end. So don't overdo it and save Key. As you command, sir. I promise I'll bring him back to life. I trust you, Toa. I have given you a great part of my spiritual power so that you'll be able to defeat the three pillars of this world. Toa would continue with her great battle, but at that moment, Goku and Jiren would increase their power even more, putting to her in serious trouble. You two entertain her. By using my Ultra Instinct, I don't have the unlimited reserves that I have in my legendary transformation. We'll risk everything in this battle. Goku and Jiren at that moment were pushing their bodies to their limits. That's right, with the power they were able to force Toa to take them seriously, since the damage he was receiving was great. Damn mortals, with a little bit of power, I swear that today will be their death. Toa at that moment would throw a great sphere of destructive energy, with which he had planned to finish the both warriors. But great was his surprise when he realized how his power was being retained. That's right, Goku and Jiren had created a great attack, which had the same power of Toa's power. Hurry up, Yamoshi! We can't take it anymore! At that moment, both attacks would explode, starting to exchange blows again. Meanwhile, with Mikoshin, they had already arrived with the Queen of Fire named Miyuki. At that moment, a beautiful woman would come out of her castle. Mikoshin, so many hundreds of years without seeing you. Tell me, what brings you to my multiverse? Haven't you felt all the power that overflows through all the megaverses? I had forgotten how paranoid you are. Yes, I have felt these powers, but they're not something that interests me, since they are still very far from my power. If I wanted to finish them with just one of my hands, 
We can't be uh, confident uh, because from what I understand, a new creator God's about to appear. But this time, he would bring destruction to everything created by the authentic creator God. That's just nonsense. A new creator God cannot be born. Nevertheless, at that moment in all the multiverses, four extremely amazing powers began to be felt. So much was the power that, in this occasion, all the universes, galaxies, spaces, and planets of each one of the multiverses were being destroyed, due to such an abysmal power. At that moment in the distance, a great light of red color could be observed. That's right, the battle of all the warriors had been so devastating that it had been able to even cross the dimensions. The moment that the three warriors would leave the dimension, they were able to observe how Toa didn't leave that place. Toa, do not leave this dimension. Don't worry if the portal closes. I will, with my power, be able to get you out. But if you leave now, the other creator gods will feel your power and finish you. I understand, Master. For this occasion, they have been saved. But the next time that I see them, it'll be very different. At that moment, Toa would return to the dimension of the Fallen Kings. While Goku, Jiren, and Yamoshi were in terrible condition, at that moment from Goku's body would come out a small energy belonging to Daishenken. Lord Goku of Universe 7 and Jiren of Universe 11. We're sorry for the decision that we took, but all of us were forced to follow the orders of the semi-god creator Ryui. But we knew that it would be able to leave, so I have left this place so that you're able to take refuge in case of emergency. At that moment, Xenosama's castle would appear again. That's right, with Daishenken's little power, he'd been able to create the castle again. With my spiritual energy as completely worn out, I wish you luck. At that moment, Yamoshi, who was the least injured, would take both warriors and begin to fly quickly through the universe to be able to reach the castle of Xenosama. At that moment, everything would return to normal. This is what I meant, Miyuki. Powers that even surpass the normal level of a king are appearing. This is not normal. Miyuki, a little surprised by all the chaos that the four powers had caused, she would agree with Mikoshin. I understand, Mikoshin. Don't worry, I'll give maximum alert and every king of everything must be prepared. Count on it. Thank you for understanding. We must defend the legacy of the Creator King. Meanwhile, in a very distant place, Ryui was also surprised by the power that was felt. That power was amazing. I can't believe it, but it won't be enough when I ascend to the Creator rank. But I must do it quickly. Ryui at that moment would enter a room which seemed to be a paradise. But in this place, he had planned to recover all his power lost millions of years ago. The sanctuary was built by a creator goddess, so the vital energy is amazing. I'll be able to recover in a few months and finish with the owners of these powers. Returning with Yamoshi after a few hours, he would arrive at the Kingdom of the Hole. At the moment of arriving, he would not be able to let him to any of the rooms, since in that same place, Yamoshi had also fallen out of combat. That's right, the wounds in his body were also serious wounds. Meanwhile, the Dimension of the Kings, Toa was furious, knowing that she wasn't able to finish with the guys who had humiliated her. Toa, you mustn't worry. Remember that revenge must be planned months or even years in advance, or else something will go wrong. Master, I understand, but I can't forgive myself for not being able to annihilate them. Next time we'll finish each one of them. Don't forget that to run you must first learn to walk, so let's take it step by step. Meanwhile with Mikoshin, she headed towards her multiverse, but at that moment she would feel vital energy in Xenosama's multiverse, heading quickly to the place, observing her castle. That's impossible! If her entire multiverse was destroyed, her castle must have been destroyed as well! Mikoshin would approach and when he was about to enter the castle, a great power would not allow him to do so. An incredible power had blocked the path of the mighty Mikoshin-sama, who was very surprised. What the hell's going on? Me being a super queen at all, this wretched barrier won't be able to stop me. 
Mikoshin would increase a great part of her power, starting to form a great attack with the intention of finishing with everything around her. The powerful attack of Mikoshin had rounded throughout the universe. That's right, the great explosion was seen by all the other multiverses. Even Ryui had noticed such power. This is the power of Mikoshin, but a gigantic power is beside it. Ryui was the only one to feel this power because his power was also reaching omnipotence, and as Goku possessed the energy of the first Saiyan God, even all his energy veins were evolving to an amazing level. Not reaching the level of the Creator God, but he was able to fight on par with them. What the hell? I attacked it with all my power! At the beginning, the gigantic Ozaru would form in front of Mikoshin. What do you want in this place? Do you want to die? At that moment the Ozara had spoken, even with the words alone, a pressure and authority was felt through the multiverse of Xenosama. What the hell are you? I'm not able to calculate the limit of your power. This is amazing. I am the beast that does not belong to this divine rank. My power even exceeds the power of a creator god, but I don't have his divinity. I don't understand who the hell you are, but I need to know if the beings that are in the palace of the king of everything are a threat or not. Rest assured, they're no threat. They're in charge of protecting this multiverse. If what you told me is true, then let me help them, since their energy is fading by the minute. I'll let you enter, but if you see anything suspicious, I'll not hesitate to finish you off. At that moment, a big door would form in front of the powerful Mikoshin. At that moment, Mikoshin would enter, she would observe Goku, Jiren, and Yamoshi in terrible conditions. Mikoshin, with her priestess power, would achieve that the trio of warriors would recover quickly. At that moment, the first to wake would be Yamoshi, who would recognize her quickly since millions of years ago, both had had great battles. Thank you very much for your help, Mikoshin. You saved our lives. Don't worry, but tell me, who is the warrior that left them in this terrible condition? I'm surprised that you, the king of the most powerful everything, has been defeated. Yamoshi at that moment would begin to explain everything that happened, up to the point in which Toa possessed a power that even surpassed his power, which would leave Mikoshin very astonished, who knew that Toa, in spite of being a queen of everything, her power did not compare with the power of a super king of everything. However, in that same moment, an extremely amazing power would arrive to where everyone was, and it was Ryui. Well, well, I destroyed this whole place. Are you the ones in charge of repairing everything? Although it's not something I care about. The thing I want is to keep all of your powers. Ryui at that moment would launch a great beam of energy towards Mikoshin with the intention of stealing large parts of her energy. However, Yamoshi would stand in front of that great attack pulverizing him with that aura. Who the hell are you? How are you able to eliminate my attacks? That's of no importance to you, but I can feel that you have absorbed my power of hundreds of living beings. So now, I'll finish you off. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, simple mortal. You have a great power, but compared to me, you're nothing. I'm about to rise to the rank of omnipotent. So you're a fallen god, because I'm the legendary Yamoshi, the being that gave battle to the gods. Ryui, without any importance to Yamoshi's words, would launch himself in the attack. However, at that moment, an amazing aura would send him to fly hundreds of kilometers because Yamoshi was increasing his power to the max. That's right, Yamoshi had access to legendary Super Saiyan, but the time of power was brutal. After a great explosion, Yamoshi would be seen in his combat form. Without losing a second, he would launch himself against Ryui, which at that moment had begun with an amazing battle, destroying territories even of the other kings of the whole. After only three minutes of battle, two of the four kings of the Hoa died in the crossfire. That's right, their power was so much that the beings were not on the same level of battle, were pulverized only with the collision of their fists. Mikoshin would try to keep up with the battle, but it was impossible since his speed even exceeded the power of the gifted angel Mikoshin. 
At that moment, Goku had awakened in the same way, but there was something different in this one. The silver-colored fur of the Ultra Instinct had disappeared, having the red fur characteristic of the Super Saiyan 4. However, the power that it gave off even surpassed the power it possessed before. Ah, my head hurts, but this power is incredible. Apparently, Emoshi is facing an extremely amazing being. No, what? Not you have awakened. Can you tell me who you are? Goku, in the same way, would explain everything that happened since Ryu he sent them to steal. Mikoshin would be amazed, since that was what Ryui was the being, which was not afraid of anything or anyone. Meanwhile, with the battle, Yamoshi, despite having unlimited power, was receiving such brutal blows, which were capable of ending the universe. However, Yamoshi's body was being torn to pieces. After a final exchange of blows, Yamoshi would fall to the ground out of combat. <laughs> so the super king of everything. <laughs> You should call yourself super trash of everything. You're not able to withstand 35% of all my power. Mikoshin, upon hearing what Ryui said, would panic, but his astonishment would grow even more upon hearing the tranquility that Goku possessed. Goku at that moment with a serious face would head towards Yamoshi. However, Ryui at that moment would throw a large sphere of energy with the intention of finishing with both warriors. But the simple aura of Goku would make it disappear. Don't worry, I'll save my master. Now I'll end your pathetic life. At that moment, Goku had taken Yamoshi with Mikoshin and had teleported in front of Ryui, sending him flying with an incredible blow. That's right, the blow that he had given him had an amazing power. So much so that it would even make him spit large amounts of blood. At the moment that Ryui did, recovered from the blow, in this occasion, all the multiverses were destroyed by the power that both warriors were releasing. Meanwhile, inside the infernal dimension, Toa was training. By spending two or more years in that place, the complete essence of his master would be part of Toa. Toa, you have been chosen as my successor, so I will always live in you. It is time to finish with those damn ones, but first control all my power. Thank you very much, master, for trusting me, and of course I will. At that moment, an amazing power would begin to enter Toa's body, which seemed to explode with so much energy. At that moment, Toa was not even able to move, so he would decide to meditate. Returning with the battle of both deities, outside only 30 minutes had passed in which Ryui was astonished, since he had received so much more damage than his enemy. At that moment, Goku with a great blow would send him back to the ground. Are you still using 35% of all your power? You better take this battle in stride, because I'm not going to hold back and end your pathetic life. Ryui would stand up angry and say to himself, Damn it, I'm already using 95% of my power. My punches don't seem to hurt him at all. Are you going to remain mute? I'm talking to you, you miserable worm. Goku, without caring about his opponent, launched again himself at him, kicking him, hitting him, hitting him with energy blasts, and he was not able to do anything to defend himself. After only 25 minutes more of battle, Ryui was in terrible conditions, unable to do anything against Kakarot, whose power instead of decreasing was increasing more and more at an amazing speed. I don't know why my power is increasing, but you didn't even make me use 20% of all my power. You are. It will be a failure. Goku would stretch one of his hands, throwing a great attack against Ryui, turning him into simple dust in the universe. At the moment, Goku would approach towards everyone, noticing that Jiren had already awakened. Seems that this is finally over. We have finished with the ambition of that wretch. But at that moment that everyone was about to leave, a great portal would be created throughout the universe of Xenosama, and in this place, an incredible power would spread. So much was the power that even would make Mikoshin and Jiren fall to their knees. The ones who could resist the pressure were Goku and Yamoshi, but after a few minutes, Yamoshi would fall to his knees. At the moment, Toa had left the portal, leaving everyone surprised. Toa, how's it possible that I have all this power? This must be a damn nightmare. You're wrong, honey. It's not a nightmare. Now I've been able to overcome your power. Goku could take a step forward. Toa, you've tried in order to take us down, but you overlooked something. I'm the most powerful Saiyan of all the multiverses and timelines. 
Goku in that same instant would also begin to increase a great part of his power, being able to even make Toa retreat a little. The power that Goku was releasing would leave everyone surprised. At that moment, a great Ozari would appear all over the place, leaving everyone surprised, but all the power that would begin to enter Goku's body, which was filling with an abominable pow power. That's right, after a great explosion, Goku had reached the power of omnipotence temporarily. Toa was surprised since the Grand Master had granted him omnipotence and was able to feel the key of that dimension. How is a mere mortal able to reach the omnipotent level? You'd be surprised to see what I'm capable of doing. Goku and Toa at that moment disappeared, giving start to the final battle between good and evil. The blows that both of them gave each other were on another level. That's right, both of them were neglecting defense, giving blows with all their power. After an exchange of blows, both of them would take distance. Toa at that moment would say to herself, The power of that Saiyan's amazing, but I'm sure that his power's temporary. I just have to endure, and then finish with all these bastards once and for all. What Toa didn't know was Goku's omnipotent power was merging with every time with Goku. And in the same way, he was able to have that majestic power activated for approximately 48 hours. Goku at that moment again had launched himself against Toa, giving some excellent blows. I'm not going to lose. I know that with this technique I'll die, but I'll go quietly that you will not be part of nothingness. What the hell are you saying? Receive my last technique. Killer hands of the omnipresent god! At that moment, a gigantic being had appeared in front of everyone. A being to massacre a part of Toa. However, not only part of her f was damaged physically, since with each blow, he snatched a large part of her, the omnipotence. And Toa was not able to do anything to free herself from the stealthy attack. And number 100 dies! At the number of 100th attack, would completely connect with Toa, eliminating him completely. However, Goku would still fall all over the universe. Mikosha would quickly take him in his arms. I've won. I've done it for you. Please, rebuild the entire multiverse of Xenosama and inform him that I forgive him. No, Goku! Damn it, you'll not die! Mikosha, at that moment, with a great mental power, would gather all the Super Dragon Balls appearing Zalma. Tell me what is your wish. I wish that you cure the Saiyan. I'm sorry, that power exceeds my power, since it's an omnipotent rank. Tell me another wish. Mikoshin, don't worry. I have to bring my friend Zen back to life. Mikoshin would fulfill Goku's request, appearing all the divine beings, and the moment Zeno-sama observed Goku in that condition, tears would be shed. My friend, I'm so sorry. This is my fault. Don't worry, my friend. Promise me that you'll train and nothing, and no one will be able to destroy our multiverse again. We promise, Mr. Goku. Thank you so much for everything. At that moment, Goku's whole body was enveloped in a great golden light and would disappear. Jiren would not believe it. Son Goku, I can't believe you died. I promise to find a way to bring you back to life. Goku's death had been a great blow to the entire Divine World, and in all the universes, they had formed a great statue in honor of their savior. Goku had taken his body to the limit. With so much power had been collected, he was able to reach omnipotence, but this would end his very existence. However, the trio of warriors would not give up and would seek a way to get Goku back to the earthly world. Damn! I can't believe Son Goku sacrificed himself for all of us, and we couldn't do anything to prevent his death. Jiren, don't worry. We weren't able to do anything at the time, but I know that Goku will come back. In fact, if there's a way in which Goku can come back, but that would mean entering the world of the Omnipotent Gods and talking to Hades. Weren't the Omnipotent Gods just a legend? I can't believe it. There really is a being powerful enough to hold Goku's power. That's right. Millions of years ago, it said that beings of great power, even if their power exceeds the level of a king at all, will be sent to the territories of omnipotent gods. In that case, we have a hope to get Goku to return. That's right. But to enter those territories is to be condemning ourselves. The powers of those warriors are overwhelming. 
It doesn't matter if I have to go to hell itself. I'm not going to let Son Goku face this alone. We were both locked up. We will both die, or we will both be victorious. I know this is a crazy idea, but if you don't want to go with us, don't worry. We'll go by ourselves. <laughs> don't make me laugh, Makoshin. I was the Saiyan that was feared by the gods themselves. So I'll go anyway, and we'll get Kakarot back, but we only have one shot at it. This was how the trio of warriors would leave towards the world of the omnipotent gods. Yamoshi, with his legendary power, was able to reach the world of the omnipotent gods, where no power was perceived, but an overwhelming pressure was perceived, which was able to even cut the breathing of the warriors. Before we can continue, it will be better that we adapt ourselves to this pressure so that we'll be able to fight with any warrior that is put in front of us. The three warriors began to meditate so that pressure is able to merge with their own body. At that moment, the power of the warriors was growing in an amazing way, because in the world of the omnipotent gods, it was much easier for the powers of all grow in an incredible way. So this majestic power is enjoyed by the beings born in this world. That's right! For that reason, their power is gigantic, because since they are born, they can cultivate their sea of energy with this pure pressure. Meanwhile, in the realm of the whole, Daishenken together with Xenosama wondered how they would be able to bring Son Goku to life. My lord, do you think Son Goku will be able to come back to life? I have no idea, Daishenken, but what I do know is that my friend Goku is not a being who gives up so easily, so I know he'll be able to come back again. Let's hope so, because in the omnipotent world, there are beings much more powerful than Toa and Archon. They knew what they were up against, but they are willing to do whatever it takes to be able to bring Goku back to life. Returning to the Trio of Warriors, in that place it had already been two months, since that time in that place passes much faster in a way. Well, it's time to continue, since we can't waste so much time. At the moment of leaving that place, a warrior would notice their presence, realizing that they did not possess the Omnipotent Key. Without being noticed, the guy had sent Yamoshi flying, falling to a planet being dragged by multiple mountains. What happened? I haven't been able to see anything at all. So, this is the power of an omnipotent god. I'm not able to assimilate it. Its power is out of my imagination. I was not able to see anything. An incredible power would be felt all over the place. That's right, Yamoshi was accessing his legendary state and was even taking his body to the limit, knowing that the warrior in front of him was not a simple worm. He was an omnipotent warrior. Yamoshi, with a great explosion, had accessed the legendary Super Saiyan. I don't know who the hell you are, but this instant I'll end your pathetic life. And it doesn't matter that you're a simple omnipotent god. Ha 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 ha! Simple human, don't you know the difference that separates us? An omnipotent being is even capable of facing 2,000 kings of his world and defeating them without any problem. Against three simple flies? <laughs> finish you off. What did you say? We start fighting so you can see if we're simple flies. Raik with a great blow would send Yamoshi to fly, and without wasting time, he would begin to exchange blows with that warrior. But his fists were shaking with each exchange of blows. Goku, please, if you've come to this world, please help us. You're the only one who could stand up to these wretches. Yamoshi would be treated like a punching bag. That's right, he was receiving the beating of his life. Jiren could not stand his anger. In the same way, he would rush against that being, but in a simple movement, he had received millions of blows fall into the ground badly injured and on the verge of death by the brutal beating. You were not able to make any scratches on me. You're a disgrace. Mikosha would stand in front of that guy. Please, spare our lives. We have only come in search of one person. We promise that when we find him, we will leave. You are a very beautiful human. If you accept to be my wife, I'll let these two scum be our slaves. I would never be your wife. My heart has already chosen someone else. In that case, die damned! Reich would throw a great sphere of energy towards Mikoshin and the others, but at that moment, the whole omnipotent world seemed to turn upside down, since the surprising pressure would be felt all over the environment, so much so that it had even destroyed Reich's attack. A majestic being would stand for Mikoshin, who would quickly recognize him. Goku, how is this possible? 
Long time no see, Makoshin. I have to explain many things, but the great god Zama allowed me to return to my true world. But I must end the lives of a few rebel gods. Who the hell are you? Oh, I can feel how you possess omnipotent energy, and at the same time, human energy. You're a damned hybrid! Reich Furious would rush to the attack, being able to grant a great blow to Goku, sending him to fly. Reich would continue with his onslaught, being able to connect hundreds of blows, which seemed to do serious damage. At the moment, Goku would fall to the ground and a great attack would be directed towards him. At the moment of a collision, a great explosion would be created all over the place, leaving absolutely nothing to see. <laughs> that simple worm wanted to compare himself to me, a powerful omnipotent god. But Reich would be astonished at the moment when he noticed how Goku would stand up without a scratch. When Reich was about to say something, Goku at superhuman speed would stand in front of Reich and in a bloodthirsty act would rip out his heart, leaving absolutely nothing. At the moment of a great attack, he would pulverize all of Reich's body, leaving absolutely nothing. Goku would approach each one of his friends, transmitting energy to them, with which he, they would obtain a great increase in power, and even their wounds would be completely healed. Son Goku, how is it possible that you're alive? It's a long story. I'll tell you all together, but I was given the mission to, with several other rebel gods to be able to return. I know you'll succeed. You have incredible power. Those gods are not trash like the one I finished a few moments ago. They're real monsters. But among all of them, I'm still worried about Sorad. In that case, we'll fight by your side. I know we don't have the necessary power to support you in this battle, but we'll help as much as we can. But at that moment, the whole place would begin to be destroyed. So on, a powerful god was approaching at an incredible speed, and despite being far away, his power began to destroy everything around him. The trio of warriors did not fall to the ground due to the essence that Goku had given them. So, you simple mortal, that will finish us, rebel gods. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You're a simple worm compared to me. Goku would get into battle pose because he knew that on the same day he would decide if he could leave that place or stay in that place forever. Goku, using a great part of his power, would be able to finish with that god quickly because he did not want to prolong the battle for a long time, knowing that the most powerful god of all the rebel gods was missing. It's better to fish with Reich right now. I'll need all his help. But at that moment, a fist of a simple child had sent Goku to fly hundreds of meters. That's right. That being with the appearance of a child was Sorat. Goku, at the moment of stopping, would begin to spit large amounts of blood due to the terrible damage that that simple blow had caused him. For my reputation, I'll not end the lives of mere mortals. You're not capable of doing anything against me. I must only end the life of this pathetic Saiyan. Sorat, at the speed that no one was able to observe, would begin to massacre Goku, who would do everything necessary to defend himself. But Sorat's power was overwhelming. We must do something. We can't allow that guy to kill Goku. We were just able to find him. We're not even able to see his attacks. The only thing we could do is to give him all our powers like last time. Now that even the omnipotent god Zama himself has entrusted him with this mission, his body's more resistant, he'll be able to withstand all his power. The trio of warriors would begin to transmit every drop of their power to Goku, although the most striking power was that of Yamoshi. Being the legendary Saiyan, the amount of power he could transmit was unlimited. Goku, despite all that power, was not able to do anything. Being totally humiliated, would fall to the ground hundreds of times. However, a latent power was awaking inside him, a power that even Goku himself didn't know about. Damn it! I won't let you finish me off! I have to have the power to finish you off and return to my world! Goku with his anger would be able to form an incredible beast and totally lose his omnipotence. That's right, Goku had returned to the Celestial Super Saiyan 4, but the power he gave off was unreal, even surpassing the power of an omnipotent god with his simple mortal form. Sora would be surprised to realize that instead of his power decreasing, it was increasing. I don't know what you did, but your power is increasing to incredible scales. Keep it up! I want a real battle! Goku's powers seemed to have no limit, and with a very serious look, he was able to dodge a great blow from Sorat, which left everyone surprised. It's time to finish you, you damn trash! You've brought chaos to the entire divine world, so I have to finish you off! 
Goku at that moment began to exchange blows with that guy. Despite the fact that Goku's power increased hundreds of times, he was only able to match the power of his enemy. However, the blows that Goku connected with him caused him great damage. Damn it! With this attack, I'm going to end your pathetic life! No matter what you do, you won't be able to finish me off! At that moment, two attacks collided with their maximum powers. Yamoshi, to one side of Goku, would throw his attack in the same way, which seemed to be insignificant, but with the course, Goku's attack was gaining ground, until the moment of turning the powerful omnipotent god Sorat into simple dust. Thank you very much, Yamoshi. All this has been thanks to you. At the precise moment that both Saiyan warriors, the shadow creatures, collided their attacks, the explosion resulting from the collision of the attacks left a crater on the battlefield, while a dense smoke obscured the view. Amidst the haze, Goku with a serious but confident expression, and Vegeta, also with a confident expression of having destroyed the shadow creatures with his attacks, stood on guard, ready to face what had emerged from the smoke. Suddenly, as soon as the smoke dissipated from the battlefield, the shadowy creatures emerged unharmed, floating in the air with an even more intense presence. Their forms twisted, revealing an even darker and more powerful transformation. Now with eyes glowing with a more intense light, the shadow creatures uttered a great malevolent laugh and moved towards Goku and Vegeta with renowned ferocity. The sky was covered with dark clouds and lightning intermittently illuminated the scene. The creatures, once scattered, began to converge into a chaotic mass. Their bodies intertwined and merged, creating a monstrous entity that emanated a dark and malevolent aura. The fusion of the creatures was completed with a loud roar, and before Goku and Vegeta emerged, a nightmarish creature. The fused creature had a grotesque figure, with twisted limbs and glowing eyes filled with evil. Its body was enveloped in a halo of dark energy, which distorted the space around it. The ground shook with every step he took, and the waves of evil energy generated chaos on the battlefield. Goku and Vegeta exchanged determined glances. They knew they faced an unprecedented threat. The fusion of the creatures had given rise to a being of incredible power and speed. Goku frowned, clenching his fists, while Vegeta gave a cocky grin. Kakarot, looks like things have become interesting. I didn't expect to have to face something like this. Yes, Vegeta, this creature's no joke. We're gonna have to give it our all. Both warriors raised their key to the maximum, surrounding themselves with an intense golden and blue aura. Their hair stood on end and the earth trembled under the pressure of their combined power. The fused creature responded with a guttural laugh and advanced towards them with great strides. Come on, Vegeta, let's attack together and put an end to this! For once, Kakarot, I agree. The battle reached its climax as Goku and Vegeta, enveloped in their golden and blue auras, launched themselves towards the fused creature. Every punch and burst of energy echoed through the air, creating a spectacle of flashes and booms. The creature, however, was not easy to defeat. Its agility and strength were astounding, dodging the Saiyan's attacks with ease. Vegeta, we need to find an opening in its defense! Focus! I know, Kakarot, but this thing's fast! The fused creature responded with a ripping attack, sending the Saiyans flying across the battlefield. Goku and Vegeta, however, quickly recovered and stood up with renewed determination. We can't underestimate this thing! Come on, Vegeta! Let's attack together! All right, Kakarot, together we'll defeat it. Goku nodded and they concentrated their energies into an amazing combined attack. A brilliant flash of light and blue light materialized in their hands, growing with each second. The fused creature, seeing the imminent threat, tried to counterattack, but it was too late. Kame! Kame! Ah! Final flash! The powerful beam of combined energy shot towards the fused creature, illuminating the dark battle with its radiance. However, just when impact seemed inevitable, the creature in the last act of desperation deployed a dark shield that managed to resist the Saiyan's assault. The result explosion sent Goku and Vegeta flying backwards, returning them to their base form, leaving them dazed and severely injured on the ground. The fused creature, though weakened, struggled to its feet, its malevolent aura flickering, but far from fading completely. 
Yeah, Vegeta, we're in trouble. This thing's stronger than we thought. Vegeta, however, lay motionless on the ground with visible wounds and his aura rapidly diminishing. Vegeta! Don't give up, Vegeta! The fused creature slowly recovering, calmly approached towards Vegeta with a palpable malevolence in its glowing eyes. Your efforts are futile. I'm the amalgam of darkness itself. This is the end of you, Saiyan Prince. Goku, full of rage and despair, stood up and threw himself towards the creature with what was left of his strength. However, the creature, with a simple wave of its hand, unleashed a wave of dark energy that enveloped Kakarot and threw him violently to the ground. Gah! Vegeta, we need a, a plan! The fused creature approached Vegeta, lifting him off the ground with one hand. The Saiyan Prince, barely conscious, opened his eyes to meet the cold, merciless gaze of his energy. Kakarot, do whatever it takes. The fused creature with a contemptuous gesture threw Vegeta back to the ground, leaving him on the verge of death. The battle, which had begun with hope, now became bleaker than ever. With his partner down and his own strength waning, Kakarot faced a strength that seemed insurmountable. Goku, sensing the desperation of the situation, recalled the hermit seeds he carried with him. The moment the fused creature came speeding towards him, Goku managed to dodge the blow swiftly, approached Vegeta and handed him one of the valuable seeds. Vegeta, eat this! It'll give you the energy to keep fighting! At the same time Goku also consumed one of the seeds, Vegeta, barely conscious, accepted the seed and consumed it urgently. The hermit seed acted quickly, healing Vegeta's wounds and restoring his life energy. Flashes of golden light surrounded the Saiyan Prince. As he stood up, his eyes were gaining determination. Kakarot, don't underestimate me. I can keep fighting. Fine, Vegeta, but we need something else to defeat this creature. Do you remember the fusion technique? Vegeta frowned but nodded in understanding. Both Saiyans positioned themselves in front of the fused creature, focusing their energies. Vegeta, let's do it! Let's merge! Huh, I don't think it'll come to this. Kakarot, but I have no choice. Both warriors stood side by side, raising their hands into the front and began to concentrate their energies. The atmosphere was filled with a brilliant glow as the two Saiyans merged into a single entity. The resulting figure was a perfect combination of Goku and Vegeta with a powerful golden aura enveloping their fused bodies. This fusion creature showed signs of unease as it witnessed the transformation. The new Saiyan entity turned to it with a determined look. The fusion between Goku and Vegeta, known as Gogeta, and his Super Saiyan form was now evident. Gogeta, with the combined voice of Goku and Vegeta, said, Prepare, Prepare for, for defeat. defeat. We're, We're the fusion of the, of the Saiyans, Saiyans. There's, there's nothing we cannot overcome. overcome. With a unified shout, the Saiyan fusion lunged towards the fused creature with incredible speed and power. The battle between the Saiyan fusion and the fused creature erupted into a frenzy of power and skill. Every move, every blow, every burst of energy shook the battlefield. The earth trembled under the intensity of the confrontation, and the sky lit up with the sparks of energy released during the fight. Gogeta, with the combination of Goku's cunning and Vegeta's determination, proved to be an unstoppable force. However, the fused creature did not yield easily, showing a resilience that defied expectations. Both contenders were at a stalemate, each pushing their limits to the max. Goku and Vegeta, in their fused form, began to feel the need to unleash more power to overcome their more formidable foe. In a moment of perfect synchronization, both Saiyans raised their ki to the limit, and the atmosphere itself began to be distorted that with the built-up pressure. It's time to take this to the next level! In a dazzling flash, the Saiyan fusion underwent an astonishing metamorphosis. His once golden hair now turned sapphire blue, and his aura took on a heavenly hue. The transformation to Super Saiyan Blue had taken place. The fused creature recoiled momentarily as it witnessed the new form. Shocked by the magnitude of the power unleashed, however, the Saiyan fusion showed no mercy and lunged towards with dizzying speed. Prepare for true Saiyan strength! The attacks and counterattacks reached a speed that defied perception. The fused creature, despite its previous endurance, was outmatched by the speed and aggressiveness of the Saiyan fusion in its Super Saiyan Blue form. The battle had not yet come to an end. In a final attempt to resist, the fused creature unleashed its own dark power, enveloping the Saiyan fusion in a spiral of chaotic energy. 
Gogeta, in response, concentrated his energy to the maximum in an act of rage. Let's, Let's go, go farther! The energy surrounding the Saiyan fusion intensified and exploded in, in a dazzling burst. The bright blue aura became more intense, and the power of the Saiyan fusion increased to unimaginable levels. The sky lit up with glows and waves of energy, as the fused creature faced Gogeta's unstoppable strength. However, in an unexpected twist, the creature began to build up a dark and sinister energy, revealing a hidden power. <laughs> Your resistance is impressive, Saiyans, but you have not seen my true potential. The fused creature transformed, its fusion distorting further. A black aura filled with malevolence surrounded its body as its eyes glowed with terrifying intensity. What, what the, the hell, hell is it doing? doing? The fused creature, now imbued with a new dark power, lunged at Gogeta with surprising speed. Despite Gogeta's formidable strength in his Super Saiyan Blue form, the fused creature seemed to be able to anticipate even more. Now you'll experience true darkness. Gogeta sensed the threat, deciding to take his own power to the extreme. In a blink of an eye, he activated the technique, the Kaioken. His blue aura multiplied into a mixture of blue and red, and the intensity of the battle reached levels never seen before. It's, it's time, time to, to put, put an, an end, end to this. this. Kaioken! Gogeta's speed and strength multiplied exponentially, and the fused creature was momentarily caught off guard. However, the creature counterattacked with a blast of dark energy that enveloped Gogeta, but he struggled to resist. Gogeta, in his Kaioken state, felt the need to raise his power even higher. Thus, his ki increased, causing the earth to tremble from such immense power, destroying mountains and lifting rocks into the skies. At that precise moment, he disappeared from the sight of the fused creature, appearing from behind and creating a glowing bluish sphere of energy that materialized between his hands. Final, Final Kamehameha! The energy sphere impacted against the fused creature with unparalleled force. The resulting explosion lit up the sky, dispersed the creature's dark energy. However, when the light faded, the fused creature emerged once again, albeit visibly weakened. <laughs> Do not underestimate my power, Saiyans. I have attained a form beyond your comprehension. Gogeta, set in the gravity of the situation, prepared for the next confrontation. The battle, far from over, was entering even more dangerous terrain. With the fate of the universe hanging in the balance in this fierce struggle between light and darkness, the battlefield was plunged into utter chaos, with destructive shockwaves reverberating throughout space. Gogeta, with his combined aura of Super Saiyan Blue and Kaioken, was moving at speeds that defied perception. The fused creature, despite his new enhanced form, was momentarily outmatched by the Saiyan warrior's speed. Darkness, Darkness cannot, cannot defeat, defeat light. light. It's, it's time, time to seal, seal your fate. fate. Though weakened, the fused creature did not give up. With impressive speed, it lunged towards Gogeta, unleashing a series of dark attacks that even defied the Kaioken's speed. <laughs> your light is but a fleeting glimmer. In the eternity of darkness, you will suffer. Gogeta, with sharp reflexes at precise moments, will dodge the fused creature's attacks. The battle reached an even greater frenzy, with a clash of fists and kicks creating waves of energy that swept the surrounding landscape. The once dark and squirmy sky were illuminated by the flashes on the contest. In the beginning of the moment of opportunity, Gogeta channeled the Kaioken to an even higher level. His aura became more intense, mixing blue with red in a dazzling display. Seeing the new burst of power, the fused creature recoiled momentarily, a moment Gogeta took advantage of to gather energy. This, this is, is the limit, limit of your darkness. darkness. Prepare, Prepare for, for the, the end. end. Gogeta, with unmatched speed, appeared in front of the fused creature, concentrating his energy to a single point. A glowing sphere of energy formed between his hands, but this time, the sphere was not blue, it was a mixture of colors. A fusion of the power of Super Saiyan Blue and Kaioken. Kaioken 20, 20 times! times. Final, Final Kamehameha! Kamehameha! The now larger, more powerful energy sphere hurled with impressive speed towards the fused creature. The resulting explosion illuminated the entire horizon, causing the mountains and valleys to be enveloped in a dazzling glow. When the light faded, the fused creature lay defeated on the ground. Stargora completely dissipated. Gogeta, with his Super Saiyan Blue form and Kaioken still activated, watched cautiously. 
The intense battle had come to an end, but the price of the confrontation was reflected in the devastated earth and the wear and tear visible on the same warrior. I, I hope that, that was enough. enough. This, this universe, universe can't, can't take, take any more of this destruction. destruction. With a flash, Gogeta deactivated the Kaoken and returned to his base form. As silence descended over the battlefield, the lingering question was whether the threat had truly been eliminated or if there was still challenges to be faced in the vast cosmos. Goku and Vegeta, feeling that the threat had been neutralized for the moment, separated from the Saiyan fusion. The intensity of the battle had left both Saiyans exhausted, but their attention was diverted to a disturbing reality. In the corner of their vision, they watched as a small dark creature made its way towards where Gohan and Broly were standing. Vegeta, something's happening! We must get there fast! Those two are in trouble if that thing gets to them. Let's go, Goku! Both Saiyans, despite their exhaustion, dashed towards Gohan and Broly's location with as much speed as possible. As they approached, they could see the dark creature getting closer and closer to the two warriors. Gohan, who was training with Broly in an attempt to increase his skills, noticed Goku and Vegeta's arrival urgently. Dad! Vegeta! Something's coming! Broly, with his per piercing gaze, had also sensed the approaching threat. <sighs> Evil creature! We will fight! The small dark creature, noticing the presence of the Saiyans, stopped advancing and displayed a malevolent laugh. Ha ha ha! Your victory is short-lived! This is only the first of many surprises! Before they could react, the dark creature split into multiple smaller shadows, surrounding Gohan and Broly with astonishing speed. Watch out, Broly! They're fast and dangerous! We will fight! We won't let them defeat us! Goku and Vegeta, arriving just in time, joined the battle. The battle became a chaotic dance of blows and explosions, as the Saiyans fought the dark shadows that multiplied endlessly. Let's finish this quickly! Gohan! Broly! Stay strong! Got it, Vegeta! Broly, unleashing his titanic power, emitted a wave of energy that temporarily dispersed the dark shadows. However, the dark creature, in a final act of desperation, merged back into a larger, more powerful form. My shadows cannot be so easily defeated. The real battle has just begun. The shadow creature, now strengthened and more menacing than ever, faced the four Saiyan warriors with palpable malevolence. Gohan, Broly, Goku, and Vegeta moved into battle stance, facing the shadow creature with determination. Come on, guys! Let's work together and put an end to this menace once and for all! Broly growled in agreement, his power emanating from him with an imposing force. Goku and Vegeta, despite their earlier exhaustion, raised their energies ready for the battle ahead. The shadow creature, with a sinister laugh, lunged towards them with surprising speed. The Saiyans responded with a coordinated assault, launching energy blasts and performing combo attacks. However, the shadow creature was agile and dodged their attacks with ease. We can't let this thing get away. Concentrate on attacking together. You're right, Vegeta. If we fight them as a team, we can overcome anything. The four Saiyans synchronized their movements, attacking in harmony. Broly unloaded titanic blows. Gohan used his agility and advanced techniques, while Goku and Vegeta coordinated their energies to create a combined assault. Despite their efforts, the shadow creature proved to be resilient and adaptable. It defended with cunning and counterattacked with fury. In a moment of tension, the shadow creature unleashed a dark glow that enveloped its form, transforming to an even more powerful and monstrous version. It's getting stronger again! It doesn't matter. I'll destroy it! The battle intensified as the shadow creature, in its enhanced form, launched waves of dark energy and unleashed more devastating attacks. The Saiyans, however, did not back down. Despite the gravity of the situation, their determination burned stronger than ever. There's no limit to our strength when we fight together! Come on, guys! We can't lose! This thing doesn't know who it's messing with. Get ready for what's coming! Gohan, Broly, Goku, and Vegeta channeled their energies to the maximum, shaking the earth under the intensity of their combined power. In a unified act, the four Saiyans raised their key to the limit and lunged towards the shadow creature with indomitable resolve. The shadow creature, now in its strengthened form, unleashed a dark energy that enveloped Broly, possessing the mighty Saiyan with a malevolent influence. Broly, his eyes now awash with shadows, stood before the other Saiyans with a may menacing presence. Broly, I won't let you be used as a puppet. We must save him. We won't let this thing manipulate Broly. Come on, guys. Let's protect ourselves and save our friend. This is getting more complicated than I thought. But no matter, we won't let the darkness win. 
The battle began with the shadow creature using Broly's immense power against them. The controlled Saiyan's attacks were fierce, with waves of energy and bursts of ki that challenged even the most experienced warriors. The Saiyans dodged a counterattack, but the shadow creature took advantage of Broly's brute strength to counter his moves. We must weaken it enough to free Broly! Dad, Vegeta, let's follow the plan and attack in unison! The three Saiyans coordinated, launching a series of swift and powerful attacks. However, the shadow creature moved with agility, dodging most of the blows and countering with blows of its own. Broly, under the influence of the Dark Possession, was showing superhuman endurance. It's not enough! Broly, fight against this influence! We must force him to break free! We're gonna give it our all! In a moment of desperation, the Saiyans decided to raise their powers to the maximum. Goku transformed into Super Saiyan sta second stage, Gohan advanced his mystical form, and Vegeta unleashed his own power into Super Saiyan second stage. The three Saiyans surrounded Broly, launching a combination of flurry of powerful attacks. Broly, resist! Don't let their darkness consume you! The shadow creature, feeling the combined presence of the three Saiyan warriors, showed signs of weakness. However, in a desperate act, the dark energy intensified its hold on Broly, raising its power even higher and unleashing unbridled fury. We can't give up! We're going to free Broly, whatever it takes! The battle reached its climax as the three Saiyan warriors, Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta, clashed against the shadow creature possessing Broly. The unleashed energy created a spectacle of flashes, explosions, and shockwaves that shook the battlefield. Goku, with his power as a Super Saiyan, moved with astonishing speed, launched energy blasts, and accurate punches at the shadow creature. Gohan, in his mystical form, unleashed a combination of fast attacks and advanced techniques, seeking to weaken the dark possession that controlled Broly. Vegeta, in his Super Saiyan second phase form, displayed titanic power, coordinating his attacks with calculated precision. Broly, listen to my voice! Don't be consumed by this darkness! The shadow creature, however, resisted tenaciously, harnessing Broly's brute strength and ferocity to counter the Saiyan's attacks. Broly, under the dark possession, responded with unstoppable strength, his attacks more intense and uncontrolled. We need to weaken that possession! Come on, guys! Keep up the pressure! This dark power won't last forever! We must resist! The battle grew more frantic. With each passing moment, the shadow creature sensing the threat of the Saiyans intensified its hold on Broly, fusing its dark energy with the brute strength of the legendary Saiyan. We can't back down now! Broly's our friend, and we won't let this darkness control him! In a moment of perfect synchronization, the three Saiyans focused their energies into a coordinated attack. Goku launched a Kamehameha, Gohan unleashed a Masenko, and Vegeta fired a final flash, all aimed at the shadow creature. The resulting explosion illuminated the battlefield, creating an energy storm. However, when the light faded, the shadow creature Broly still stood, visibly weakened but far from defeated. It's not enough! We must find a way to free Broly from this possession! At that moment, the shadow creature, taking advantage of the Saiyan's momentary weakness, launched a surprise attack, sending Goku and Gohan to the ground. Vegeta, with his rage in his eyes, stood up determined. Enough's enough! We won't let this thing continue to manipulate Broly. Vegeta concentrated his key to the maximum, unleashing a new transformation. His intense blue aura transformed into an even brighter and more powerful hue. Super Saiyan Blue! The atmosphere itself seemed to tremble at the magnitude of the transformation. Vegeta, now in his evolved form, launched himself towards the shadow creature with renewed speed and power. Vegeta's transformation in Super Saiyan Blue Evolved caused a dramatic change in the intensity of the battle. His bright blue aura flashed with overwhelming energy as he charged towards the shadowy creature and Broly, who was still under his influence. It's time to put an end to this. Broly, I'll fight to free you from this darkness. The shadow creature, sensing the threat posed by Super Saiyan Blue, adopted a defensive stance. On the other hand, Broly, his eyes still darkened, prepared to face Vegeta. Vegeta unleashed a flurry of quick and precise attacks, combining punches and kicks with astonishing speed. Each move was charged with the strength of the new form, and the shadow creature was forced to retreat in the face of Vegeta's fury. Broly, regain control! I'll not allow this darkness to consume you! Broly, under the influence of the Dark Possession, responded with impressive stamina. His attacks were brutal and uncontrolled, but Vegeta moved with a dexterity that defied expectations. 
I need to find an opening in this possession. In an act of bravery, Vegeta launched himself directly towards Broly. Their fists collided forcefully, and Vegeta, using all his skill, made precise strikes that temporarily weakened the dark influence. Broly, fight this! You're stronger than this darkness! The shadowy creature, seeing Vegeta's resistance, increased his energy and fused even more with Broly. Now the dark influence was more entrenched than ever, and Broly unleashed an explosion of wild power. You can't stop me, Saiyan Prince! Vegeta, not backing down, continued to engage Broly. The battle reached new heights as both warriors unleashed the most powerful attacks. Vegeta launched a big bang attack while Broly responded with a gigantic charge of dark energy. The collision of energies generated a huge explosion that blanketed the area. After the dust settled, Vegeta lay on the ground clearly exhausted but not giving up. I can't lose. My determination's stronger than your darkness. The battle between Vegeta and Broly, who was possessed by the shadow creature, reached a critical point. The overflowing energy of the confrontation was spreading across the battlefield, distorting the air and creating palpable tension. At that crucial moment, Goku found himself regaining consciousness, stood up, and immediately went to Saiyan's prince's side. Vegeta, let's go! Let's give it all we've got! Goku's transformation into Super Saiyan Phase 2 and joined the fray. The shadow creature, seeing the arrival of another Saiyan warrior, prepared to face the new threat. Kakra, you're just in time. This thing has gotten stronger with Broly. We'll face it together! Broly, we won't let this darkness control you! The three Saiyans stood in formation, ready to deal with the shadow creature fused with Broly. The intensity of the conflict increased even more with flashes of energy and clashes of fists echoing throughout the battlefield. Come on, Kakarot, let's attack in unison and free Broly. I got it, Vegeta. Together, we'll free him. The Saiyans coordinated their attacks, launching a combined blast towards the shadow creature. Despite their efforts, Broly's dark possession was still resisting, fueled by the brute strength of the legendary Saiyan. Broly, under the influence of the shadow creature, unleashed an uncontrolled fury. His attacks were unpredictable and devastating, putting the Saiyans on the defensive. Goku, Vegeta, and the shadow creature continued to exchange energy blasts and powerful blows. Vegeta, we must break that possession! We can't let Broly fall into darkness! Roger that, Kakarot. Let's keep attacking together. Amidst the chaos of the battlefield, the fiery aura of the Saiyans lit up the sky, a visual manifestation of their mammoth power. Goku and Vegeta, feeling the weight of the battle, decided to take it a step further. They joined their energies in a symphony of power, a final bid to tear apart the shadows enveloping the evil presence. The shadow creature on the brink of the abyss responded with desperation. It raised its own power and the darkness churned with intensity as it struggled to resist the combined onslaught of the Saiyans. The clash of energies created a cataclysm of flashes and booms, shaking the battlefield to its core. At that critical moment, the energy explosion was unleashed with dazzling magnificence. The earth shook and the shockwave swept across the landscape, leaving behind a trail of destruction. Goku, Vegeta, and Broly, enveloped in the blanket of the explosion, were momentarily eclipsed by the blinding light and dancing shadow. When the shimmering luminosity faded, the Saiyans found themselves faced with a new scenario. On the ground lay Broly, his figure shrouded in a residual haze of the contest. The dark aura that had consumed him had finally dissipated. Stillness reigned on the battlefield. As the warriors approached with worried looks, the formidable warrior who now resisted, his power darkened, finally silenced. We did it, Vegeta. Broly's free. Yes, but this shadow creature's still a problem. We can't let our guard down. Vegeta nodded grimly as they watched Broly, who lay on the ground, slowly recovering from the intense battle. However, at that moment of apparent calm, the shadow creature, cunning and unnoticed, had left Broly's possession to seek a new host. The dark entity swiftly swept into the shadows, unnoticed by the Saiyans, who still assessing their companion's condition. Silently, the shadow creature crept towards Gohan, who had been watching the battle from a distance. Gohan, oblivious to the threat looming over him, felt a shiver run down his spine, just as the shadow creature enveloped him with its dark presence. A momentary flash of its eyes indicated that something was terribly wrong. 
At that instant, Gohan, with a sudden alteration in his expression, went on guard without warning. His gaze, now posed by the shadow creature, glowed with a malevolence that contrasted with his gentle nature. Goku, noticing this unintention, turned towards Gohan, but before he could react, Gohan, under the influence of the shadow creature, moved with supernatural speed. The confrontation with Broly had left the Saiyans exhausted, and the shadow creature, seizing the opportunity, vanished into the darkness along with Gohan. Vegeta, realizing the situation, gritted his teeth in fury. The threat persisted, and now Gohan, a valuable ally, was in the hands of the shadows. Goku and Vegeta, despite their exhaustion, prepared for a new confrontation, aware that the battle had not yet come to an end. The tension in the air was palpable, as Goku and Vegeta, still worried about Broly, with determination, turned towards the place where the dark entity had vanished. Damn it, where'd that thing go? I don't know, Vegeta, but we must find it before it hurts Gohan! The two Saiyans, quick as the wind, rushed towards where Gohan had been standing, their senses alert. The shadow creature, now inside Gohan, emerged from the shadows with a sinister laugh. Ha 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 ha! Looks like they're not as cunning as they thought. Now I have a new toy for my plans. Get out of Gohan, you damn creature! I'll not allow you to possess my son! Ha! You think you could stop me? My power possesses even more of your combined forces! Do not underestimate the Saiyans. We have overcome greater challenges than you. Leave Gohan and face your fate, creature. You'll not be victorious. The shadow creature, now in control of Gohan, smiled malevolently before responding. We'll see how long you can resist. Gohan is now an instrument of my will. The shadow creature possessing Gohan unleashed a burst of dark energy that distorted the surrounding space. Goku and Vegeta suddenly found themselves during a chaotic confrontation, with Gohan now transformed into an instrument of the malevolent entity. The waves of energy radiating from Gohan's possessed figure created an ominous aura that filled the battlefield to find the Saiyans' endurance and determination. The Saiyans, in their Super Saiyan Blue form, prepared for the impending clash. The shadow creature using Gohan's body moved with supernatural agility, dodging the Saiyan's first attacks with grace and malice. Gohan, his eyes now filled with darkness, lunged at Goku with astonishing speed. Goku blocked Gohan's first few blows with difficulty, feeling the enhanced strength and speed of his new controlled son. The fight was intense, each move charged with power and ferocity. Meanwhile, Vegeta positioned himself strategically, assessing the situation looking for an opening to attack. The shadow creature, through Gohan, unleashed a flurry of attack which a devastating blows that kept Goku on the defensive. However, Goku's ability to adapt quickly to the battle allowed him to counter the attacks and counterattack with his own overwhelming power. Vegeta, sensing an opportunity, lunged at the shadow creature from an unexpected angle. However, the dark entity had sharp reflexes and deflected Vegeta's attack with ease, throwing Gohan against Goku as a distraction. The Shadow Creature's strategy paid off, as it took advantage of the distraction to hit Vegeta with a beam of dark energy. Vegeta, although he resisted the impact, was momentarily weakened. The entity, now with a malevolent smile, turned to him. Damn it! This is an overshadow creature. Goku, reacting quickly, stepped between the Shadow Creature and Vegeta. Vegeta, hold on! We can't let this thing divide us! The shadow creature, enjoying the chaos at its zone, released a dark aura that enveloped both Saiyans. The dark energy sought to confuse and weaken their senses, however the Saiyans' instinctive connection to Ki enabled them to resist the dark influence. The battle raged in a frenzy of clashing colors and energies. Gohan, controlled by the shadow creature, moved with a mixture of speed and agility that defied the laws of physics. Goku and Vegeta, each focusing on their own battlefront, were trying to coordinate their attacks to free Gohan from the dark possession. Gohan, fight this darkness! You're stronger than this! Gohan, though showing flashes of resistance, was caught in an internal struggle between his will and the shadow creature's control. The battle grew more challenging. With each passing second, the shadow creature reveled in its ability to manipulate and corrupt one of Earth's mightiest warriors. Vegeta, recovering from the earlier onslaught, threw himself back into the fray. The shadow creature however anticipated his attack and gracefully dodged Vegeta's attempts to strike it. The dark entity counterattacked with a series of precise blows that forced Vegeta to retreat. You damn shadow, don't underestimate the prince of the Saiyans. 
Goku, seeing his partner's difficulty, raised his power to the maximum. Dazzling energy emanated from his Super Saiyan Blue form as he prepared for a concentrated attack. The shadow creature, noticing the glowing threat, diverted its attention to Goku. Vegeta, keep up the pressure! I'm gonna concentrate my energy to free Gohan! Vegeta nodded and increased his offensive, distracting the shadow creature as Goku concentrated his power. The fight reached a new level of intensity, with each move echoing across the vast battlefield. The energy collided, creating shockwaves that distorted reality itself. Goku, eyes glowing with determination, unleashed his most powerful attack, a sphere of glowing blue energy formed in his outstretched hands. Charged with the combined strength of the Saiyans, the spear grew in size and the power as Goku had held it in place. It's time to free Gohan! The shadow creature, realizing the threat, moved quickly to stop Goku's attack. Vegeta, taking advantage of the distraction, lunged with renewed fury, looking for an opening to attack. The battle reached its climax when Goku released the energy sphere, ascending it directly towards the shadow creature. The energy sphere burst into a dazzling flash, illuminating the battlefield with intense light. Shockwaves swept through the darkness as Goku's purifying energy sought to free Gohan from the shadow creature's possession. However, as the light faded and the earth stopped shaking, the shadow creature emerged seemingly unharmed. The dark entity, now irritated, turned to the Saiyans with a twisted laugh. Is that all you can do? My power is unbreakable! Goku and Vegeta, despite their exhaustion, prepared for the next assault. The battle, far from ending, dragged on into confrontation of epic proportions. Darkness and light collided in an endless clash, with the will of the Saiyans resisting against the entity that threatened to plunge them into the shadows. The dark creature, after resisting Goku's powerful attack, showed a malicious smile. A dark glow enveloped Gohan, and his body began to tremble with intensity. A guttural scream echoed through the air as the dark entity forced a unique transformation on the Saiyan warrior. Gohan, under the shadow creature's influence, contorted and his body was enveloped in a dark, feral energy. The earth trembled with the intensity of the transformation, and Gohan's figure began to change. Defined musculature, red eyes, a wild gaze, long gray hair, and emerging in the new form, Gohan Dark Beast. Vegeta and Goku, shocked by the unexpected evolution, instinctively recoiled from the overwhelming presence of Dark Gohan Beast. The shadow creature had accomplished what it could not do with Broly, unleash a unique and uncontrolled transformation on Gohan. Dark Beast Gohan, now freed from any hint of rationality, roared skyward emitting an overwhelming energy that shook the battlefield. His eyes glowed with an animalistic intensity, and his posture indicated that human control was suppressed. This can't be happening. What did that thing do? The shadow creature managed to unlock something inside Gohan. This won't be easy. The shadow creature, pleased with the success of its manipulation, watched the scene with satisfaction. Now, witness my true power. The same beast warrior. How do you plan to stop him? Dark Beast Gohan let out a deafening roar and lunged towards Vegeta with impressive speed. Dark Beast Gohan's attacks were ferociously savage, his brute strength and speed surpassing even Broly's most rampaging transformation. Vegeta, using his speed and agility, dodged Dark Beast Gohan's first attacks. However, the Saiyan Beast Warrior's ferocity was unpredictable, and Vegeta was forced to deploy all his skill to stay out of range of the devastating attacks. Goku, assessing the situation, transformed into Super Saiyan Blue and rushed to Vegeta's aid. The two Saiyans fought in tactical coordination, looking to open an opportunity to counter Gohan's savage new form. The battle became a whirlwind of energy, with explosions and crashes echoing across the battlefield. The shadow creature in the shadows continued to manipulate and fuel Dark Beast Gohan's fury. The Saiyan strategy was becoming more and more challenging as Dark Beast Gohan seemed to be one step ahead, anticipating their moves. Damn it! Gohan Beast is too unpredictable! We must find a way to free Gohan from this transformation! We can't let the shadow control his true power! As the Saiyans faced Gohan Beast's fury, the shadow creature watched from the shadows, and joined the chaos he had unleashed. The situation was becoming more critical with each passing moment, and the Saiyans endured, and the Saiyans' endurance was being tested in the face of Beast Gohan's uncontrollable fury. 
The battle raged on in a titanic struggle between light and darkness, with the hope of freeing Gohan from the influence of the shadow creature hanging in delicate balance. The Saiyans, determined to overcome this challenge, faced an enemy that had managed to unleash an even greater internal threat than before. While the intense battle raged on on the battlefield, Piccolo, the Namekian sage, was immersed in his mental training somewhere secluded. His concentration was so deep that he could feel an abrupt shift in key, a disturbance that reverberated through space and time. A shiver ran down his back, indicating the gravity of the situation. Something's not right. The Namekian instantly stood up, his cloak billowing as he focused on the direction of the glowing chaos. The power he felt was not just brute force, it was an amalgam of dark energies that seemed to defy the very essence of reality. Wasting no time, Piccolo prepared to approach the side of the conflict. Back on the battlefield, Goku and Vegeta fought valiantly against Dark Beast Gohan, who moved with uncontrollable ferocity under the influence of the shadow creature. The dark entity sensing Piccolo's arrival smirked. Looks like we have a new guest. This just gets more interesting. Goku and Vegeta focused on Gohan Beast, noticing Piccolo's presence as he appeared on the battlefield with a serenity that contrasted with the surrounding chaos. What happened here? What have you done with Gohan? That shadow thing possessed Gohan and transformed it into a wild beast. We can't free Gohan this way! The shadow creature manipulates his power in unimaginable ways! Dark Beast Gohan, noticing Piccolo's arrival, turned to him with wild eyes. The shadow creature, enjoying the chaos, prepared for the next act of this heartbreaking play. Welcome, Piccolo. You're just in time to witness the inevitable downfall of these Saiyans. Don't underestimate the Saiyans or my determination. I'm here to free Gohan. The Namekian braced himself for the confrontation, deploying his key with an intensity that made it clear he would not be a mere spectator in this battle. Dark Beast Gohan, fueled by the shadowy influence, roared and lunged towards Piccolo with a speed that defied all logic. The battle became even more chaotic with Piccolo's entrance. His movements were precise and calculated, contrasting with the wild ferocity of Dark Beast Gohan. Goku and Vegeta, aware of Piccolo's strategic skill, adjusted their approach to coordinate their attacks with the Namekian. Meanwhile, the shadow creature watched the battle with a Machiavellian smile, enjoying the confrontation between the forces of light and shadow. The dark entity was determined to prove that its influence was insurmountable. The fight unfolded in a whirlwind of colliding energies, with Piccolo demonstrating his tactical and strategic prowess. Dark Beast Gohan, however, remained a formidable challenge, his erratic movements and uncontrolled strength testing the tenacity of the warriors on the battlefield. Goku, Vegeta, we need to plan to break the connection between Gohan and that shadow creature. You're right, Piccolo. We need to attack from different fronts and destabilize that connection. I'll take care of keeping Beast Gohan busy. Kakarot, you use the connection you have with your son to try to isolate the shadow creature. Goku and Vegeta, coordinating their efforts with Piccolo's strategic expertise, win on the assault. Piccolo used his wisdom to be able to devise a way to, to get Dark Beast Gohan out of said possession, while Vegeta unleashed his fury with calculated attacks to keep the beast at bay. As the battle continued, the shadow creature began to feel the pressure of the combined strategy of the Saiyans and Piccolo. The connection between Gohan and the Dark Entity was under threat and the shadow creature, despite its confidence, was beginning to show signs of concern. The battle was far from over, but the warrior's resilience was growing stronger in the face of the adversity that loomed over them. As Piccolo continued his mental struggle to free Gohan from the shadow creature's possession, his Namekian senses sharpened. Keen perception led him to identify a small shadow leech clinging to Dark Beast Gohan's lower neck a detail that had not been evident in Broly's previous possession due to his long hair covering that region. That's it. The key is in this little shadow leech on his neck. We must eliminate it to free Gohan. Piccolo's revelation attracted the attention of Vegeta and Goku on the physical battlefield. Vegeta, upon hearing this, turned his gaze to the back of Gohan Beast's dark neck and noticed the presence of the shadow leech. A shadow leech? That explains why we couldn't free Broly this way. How do we eliminate it without harming Gohan? As Piccolo struggled to maintain his mental connection, he analyzed this situation and came up with a strategy. If we attack the Shadow Leech directly, we might harm Gohan in the process. We need a precise way to eliminate it without endangering his life. So what's the plan, Piccolo? 
Goku, you've mastered Ultra Instinct, but you can only maintain it for a few seconds. We need to take advantage of those brief moments to distract Dark Beast Gohan and allow you to get close enough to destroy the Shadow Leech. Understood, Piccolo. I'll do my best. But how do we make sure Beast Gohan doesn't attack while Kakarot's approaching? That's the tricky part. We need to keep Gohan busy and distracted. Vegeta, your attacks must be precise and constant, keeping his attention on you. I will, but Kakarot, don't make me regret this. The battle resumed with renowned intensity. Vegeta went on the offensive, attacking Gohan Dark Beast with a series of swift and powerful blows. Gohan responded with ferocity, but Vegeta maintained agile, dodging his attacks while keeping the Savage Saiyan Warrior's attention. At that moment, Goku concentrated, channeling Ultra Instinct. An aura of flickering energy surrounded him as he activated the powerful transformation. His speed increased exponentially, allowing him to easily dodge Dark Beast Gohan's attacks. Now, Goku, now's your chance. Goku in his Ultra Instinct state moved with superhuman speed towards Gohan's rear. The shadow creature, still focused on the fierce confrontation with Vegeta, did not notice Goku's approach. This is my chance to end this! With pinpoint accuracy, Goku reached out his hand and touched the small shadow leech on Gohan's neck. The leech, upon being touched by the Ultra Instinct energy, began to fade, emitting a dark screech before dissolving completely. Dark Beast Gohan, losing connection with the Shadow Leech, shook violently, as if releasing himself from a trance. Vegeta, noticing the change, cautiously stepped back as Goku returned to his normal state. What happened? Kakarot seems to have found a way to free you from that thing. It was risky, but it worked. Well done, Goku, but don't let your guard down. This Shadow Creature might have more tricks up its sleeve. The immediate threat had been neutralized. The shadow creature, watching from the shadows, moving away unnoticed by the Saiyan warriors, was not about to give up, so the shadow creature set out to return to its master. After the terrifying moment that the Z warriors had experienced, Goku and Vegeta realized that Beerus and Whis were not on Earth. They had disappeared just moments before the shadow creatures appeared on Earth. This is because Daishenken discovered that Xenosama had been killed by his father and immediately summoned all the angels and gods of destruction. In the majestic realm of all, Daishenken, the high priest, summoned all the angels and gods of destruction of the existing universes. The atmosphere in the hall was unusually tense, and concern was reflected in the faces of those present. Daishenken, with his usual calmness, prepared to share the disturbing truth he had discovered. Angels and gods of destruction, the time has come to face a powerful truth. Xenosama, our beloved king of all, has been slain. Silence fell over the hall. The angels and the gods of destruction exchanged looks of disbelief and dismay. No one expected that such a tragedy could occur, especially at the hands of someone so powerful. My investigation revealed that the one responsible for this abominable act was Xenosama's own father. The news resounded like a somber echo in the room. Everyone present processed the shocking revelation. The omnipresent figure of Xenosama, the supreme deity, had been shattered by his own protagonist. Mojito, Sidra's angel, spoke in a worried voice. How is it possible that a being as powerful as Xenosama's father could have committed such an act? That is a question for which I still have no answers. But now we must face the consequences of this event. The stability of the multiverse is in danger. Erak, the god of destruction of Quitella, asked, And what measures will we take in the face of this threat? What will happen to the throne of Xenosama? That is a question we must discuss and resolve. For now, the throne remains empty, and our duty is to maintain peace and balance. But before we make hasty decisions, we need to fully understand the magnitude of this situation. Beerus and Wisp prepared to inform the gods of destruction and angels of all universes about what they had witnessed while on planet Earth with Goku and Vegeta. The Hall of the Realm of Everything was filled with celestial beings, each one expectant and worried about the news they were about to receive. Attention everyone, we have crucial information to share about the events that have been unfolded. Before we are summoned here, the father of Xenosama appeared on all the planets of the multiverse. Surprised was reflected on the faces of those present. Murmurs and whispers filled the room, as the gods of destruction and angels exchanged looks of disbelief. 
His visit was not simply to report the death of Xenosama. He announced the holding of the tournament that would determine the survival of the planets in each universe. Additional rumors filled the room, creating a constant buzz of concern. The gods of destruction and angels wanted to understand the implications of such an announcement. He informed the rules of the tournament and the intentions behind such a competition, but it's necessary that we all work together to get answers and face this threat. It is time to join forces and overcome this crisis. The fate of our universes is at stake. As the gods and angels absorbed the gravity of the situation, in every corner of the hall of the realm of everything, conversations and plans were brewing to confront the mysterious tournament that threatened to upset the balance of the multiverse. Uncertainty hung in the air, but the determination of the divine beings was determined to face the unknown that lay ahead. In the Hall of Everything, Daishaken, the High Priest, sensed the imminent arrival of extremely powerful entities heading for the different planets of the multiverse. His face reflected seriousness as he prepared to inform all the angels and gods of destruction present of the coming threat. Gods and angels of destruction, the time has come to face a new and challenging threat. Entities of great power are headed towards the planets of our universes, and their goal seems to be a direct confrontation with the strongest warriors of each world. The expressions of those present became serious. Aware of the gravity of the situation, Daishenkin continued with determination. It's crucial that we move quickly to protect the strongest warriors of each planet, regardless of which universe they belong to. The threat we face does not respect universal boundaries, and we must act with unity to preserve the balance. Vados, the Angel of Champa, raised his hand. How do you plan for us to move, Daishenkin? We each have responsibilities in our universes. I understand the complexity of this situation, but the magnitude of this threat requires immediate action. I suggest that every angel and god of destruction move to the planets threatened by this unknown force. We must prevent the strongest warriors from being defeated before we can fully understand our enemies. Sounds like a sensible plan, Daishenkin. If we all work together, we can protect our warriors and gain more information about these powerful entities. Each angel and god of destruction nodded in agreement, accepting the need to act immediately. They moved quickly to the various planets, casting aside universal barriers in a joint effort to safeguard the multiverse. May the wisdom and power of each of you guide this effort. Let us not underestimate this new threat. Our duty is to protect the existence of our universes. With those words, the angels and gods of destruction dispersed, leaving the Hall of All in preparation to face a challenge that transcended universal boundaries and demanded the collaboration of all divine beings. Uncertainty hung in the air, but determination to preserve the balance of the multiverse guided the powerful beings in their joint mission. The angels and gods of destruction quickly teleported to the threatened planets, each determined to protect the strongest warriors on the various planets. In the blink of an eye, the skies lit up with flashes of divine energy as Awamo and Ewin, Cognac and Quintella, Matanu and Gein, Wiss and Beerus, and the other angels and gods of destruction headed toward their assigned destinations. The planet Thraxis Nocturne lay peaceful in the corner of the cosmos, its nocturnal luminosity radiating a tranquility that was about to be disturbed. In the vast space, Awamo the Angel, with his small book in hand and his God of Destruction Ewin, an imposing figure with a stern gaze, detected the arrival of a shadow creature, a minion of Xenosama's father. The creature, shrouded in malevolent darkness, descended with malevolent determination towards Thraxis Nocturne. Ewin, without hesitation, deployed his energy of destruction while Awano stood by, hoping to resolve the conflict without a bath of chaos. Creature, your darkness will not be tolerated in this realm. Stop your destructive plans. The shadow creature emanated a guttural growl, its presence emanating an unnatural energy that distorted the space around it. The space battle began with an explosion of opposing forces. Ewan launched destructive beams, while Luamo used his speed to dodge the attacks and assess the situation. Ewan! This creature's stronger than we imagined. We must be cautious. I know, Awamo, but we can't let him destroy Thraxis Nocturne. We must give our best. 
The shadow creature, agile and evasive, responded to the attacks with dark energy waves that distorted space. The battle spread across the firmament, leaving traces of destructive energy in its wake. Ewen tried to anticipate the creature's movements. However, the shadow creature proved to be agile and adaptive, countering every strategy with an unmatched dark force. Our conventional methods don't work. Ewen, we need to combine our forces. I agree, Awamo. It's time to show them the true power of destruction. Awamo and Ewen merged their energies, creating a flash of light that defied the surrounding darkness. The shadow creature, perceiving the threat, intensified its own energy, generating a collision of cosmic forces that shook space itself. The battle reached a fever pitch, with cosmic explosions lighting up the scene as Awamo and Ewen struggled to contain the darkness. The struggle took place not only on the physical plane, but also on the spiritual one, where the will to protect Thraxis Nocturne was pitted against the ruthless ambition of the shadow creature. The fusion of Awamo and Ewen unleashed a dazzling energy that eclipsed even the nocturnal luminosity of Thraxis Nocturne. The gold and violet glow enveloped the divine couple as they prepared to face the dark threat looming over the peaceful planet. It's time to show the true extent of our power, Awamo! The shadow creature, aware of the growing threat, rushed towards them with supernatural speed. Awamo, with his keen perception, anticipated every movement of the creature, allowing the couple to dodge its onslaughts with heavenly elegance. Keep calm, Ewan. We must synchronize our movements to counteract their darkness. Ewen nodded and unleashed a series of destructive energy blasts that lit up the space around him. However, the shadow creature responded with amazing agility, dodging every attack with meandering movements. The battle became a cosmic game of strategy and speed. The angel Awamo and the god of destruction Ewen soon realized that in order to defeat this entity, they would need a coordinated attack that transcended the limits of their individual abilities. In a moment of perfect timing, they unleashed a gale of combined energy. Awamo channeled the energy of destruction while Ewen released violet flashes of destruction. Focus your energy, Awamo. Let's get rid of this darkness once and for all. Awamo nodded and joined the attack with determination. The fused energy of both angel and god turned into a spear of golden and violet light that pierced through space with an impressive speed. The shadow creature, caught in the torrent of power, let out a heart-rendering howl as it was enveloped by the luminosity. The impact was abysmal, generating an expansive wave that shook the cosmos. The darkness that enveloped the creature began to dissipate, revealing its twisted and weakened form. Awamo and Ewen, exhausted but triumphant, stood on guard ready for any eventuality. We have managed to contain their darkness, but we can't let our guard down. The shadow creature, not visibly weakened, recoiled before the imposing presence of Awamo and Ewen. The light had prevailed over the darkness in the cosmic corner of Thraxis Nocturne. The divine couple remained firm in their duty to protect the planet that this creature wanted to destroy. However, the battle was not yet over, and the fates of the planets remained uncertain in the vastness of space. After the shocked combined attack of Awamo and Ewan, the space around Thraxis Nocturne was vibrating with the residual energy of the cosmic battle. The shadow creature, apparently weakened, remained suspended in the cosmic void, enveloped in a dark glow that seemed to absorb the surrounding light. The divine couple watched cautiously, aware that the fate of Thraxis Nocturne was still hung in the cosmic balance. Ewen, something's not right. The darkness of that creature seems to be getting stronger instead of weaker. It seems that our attack has absorbed by her, but it shouldn't be possible. How can he transform our energy of destruction to his own power? The shadow creature, now surrounded by more intense aura, began to change its shape. Its twisted figure became more defined. His eyes shone with a malevolent lucidity. The darkness emanating from her was becoming denser, distorting the space around her. You have underestimated my true potential, angel and god of destruction. Your energy has strengthened me beyond your comprehension. The divine couple prepared for what was to come next, aware that the threat they faced had evolved. The shadow creature, now empowered by the absorbed energy, charged towards them with renewed speed and ferocity. 
We need to be more cautious, Ewan. It seems that every blow we inflict makes her stronger. Understood, Awamo, but we can't allow this darkness to devour Thraxis Nocturne. The battle resumed with increased intensity. The shadow creature attacked with bursts of dark energy that cut through space. While Awamo and Ewan responded with flashes of golden and violet light. The cosmic dance of lights and shadows painted an epic picture in the vastness of the universe. Each blow and backlash echoed like thunder in space, distorting reality itself. Awamo, with his keen perception, tried to anticipate the movements of the dark creature, but the dark entity proved to be unpredictable. Ewen, with his energy of destruction, sought to weaken the creature, but his attacks seemed to be absorbed and turned into an additional source of power. Every time we hit her, her power increases. We can't go on like this. We must find a way to counteract his ability, to absorb our energy. And do you have any ideas, Awamo? Awamo pondered for a moment, his angelic mind working in search of a solution. Meanwhile, the shadow creature, aware of its opponent's confusion, took the opportunity to launch a surprise attack. A wave of dark energy enveloped Awamo and Ewan, distorting their perception and weakening their defenses. Ha 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 Your resistance is useless! I am the embodiment of darkness! His light cannot prevail before me! The situation was becoming more and more desperate for the divine couple as they struggled to resist the shadow creature's attacks. Awamo turned his attention to the small book he always carried with him. An idea began to form in his mind. Ewen, I think I have an idea, but we need to synchronize our attacks in a different way. Explain yourself, Awamo. Awamo explained his plan to Ewen, who nodded in understanding. Both God and Angel prepared to put their strategy into practice. The shadow creature, confident in its superiority, launched into the attack again, but this time Awamo and Ewen were ready to respond differently. Now Ewen, combine your energy of destruction with mine in a more controlled way. Ewen nodded and channeled his energy to Awamo, who in turn merged it with his. Instead of launching a direct attack, they created a sphere of combined light and energy that floated between them. Do you think this tactic will change the outcome? We'll see. The energy sphere began to slowly expand, emanating a glowing light that contrasted the surrounding darkness. The shadow creature, curious but confident, watched the development with disdain. The fused power is not only destructive, but it also has properties that counteract its absorption capacity. The combined energy sphere, now reaching its maximum expansion, released a wave of light and energy that enveloped the shadow creature. This time, instead of absorbing the power, the darkness that characterized her began to dissipate. What is this? My power should not be weakened! We create an energy that goes beyond destruction and creation. One that neutralizes the darkness that you're trying to absorb. The shadow creature, weakened by Awamo and Ewen's strategic counterattack, retreated as the combined energy sphere continued to exert its effect. The light emanating from the sphere began to purify the darkness surrounding the entity, revealing its original form before corruption. It seems our tactic's working, but we must make sure we contain it completely. We can't let our guard down. Let's continue with the strategy until the creature is completely neutralized. The space battle continued, but this time Awamo and Ewen had the upper hand. His sphere of combined energy continued to exert its purifying effect, dispelling the darkness that threatened Thraxis Nocturne. With each passing moment, the shadow creature grew weaker. The light of hope began to shine in the corner of the cosmos that was once on the verge of destruction. The shadow creature, weakened by Awamo and Ewan's strategy, retreated into space. Its distorted form twisting as the combined energy sphere continued to purify the darkness that enveloped it. In a desperate attempt to regain its strength, the shadow creature began to explore its surroundings, looking for an opportunity to turn the situation in his favor. My power is weakened here. I need to find a place where darkness prevails. While exploring, the shadow creature noticed something that favored him. His eyes flashed with malevolent anticipation as he discovered that this world was called Thraxis Nocturne because it was a planet plunged into shadows. The dark entity smiled malevolently as he realized that this planet could provide the darkness needed to revitalize his power. Ha 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 ha! Thraxis Nocturne, a feast of darkness awaits me! 
With amazing speed, the shadow creature launched itself towards the planet, traversing space with great speed. Awamu and Ewin, aware of his intentions, followed closely, determined to stop any attempt by the shadow creature to plunge into the darkness of the planet. As the creature approached Thraxis Nocturne, the darkness of the planet seemed to intensify, as if responding to its presence. The planet's nighttime atmosphere shone with a faint luminosity, offering a fascinating contrast to the surrounding stars. Ewan, we must prevent the creature from being filled with dark power. If she succeeds, it will be even more difficult to stop her. Understood, Oamo. We will not allow the darkness of this planet to fall into the hands of that entity. The shadow creature descended on Thraxis Nocturne with a terrifying impetus. As she approached, the darkness seemed to take her in, enveloping her with a gloomy welcome. The shadow creature began to absorb the darkness of the planet, its twisted form vibrating with a new energy as it filled with the essence of Thraxis Nocturne. Ha 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 ha! Yes, this darkness will strengthen me. Nothing can stop me now. Awamo and Ewen, wasting no time, headed towards the shadow creature, determined to stop its advance before it became unstoppable. The battle in the shadows of Thraxis Nocturne was about to take a very drastic turn. We cannot allow this darkness to completely corrupt this creature. We must stop her before she becomes invincible. Your previous strategy was effective, Awamo. Let's keep working together to counter his power. Deep in the shadows of Thraxis Nocturne, the intense presence of the absorbing shadow creature did not go unnoticed by the most powerful warriors on the planet. Turles, Bardock, Raditz, Frieza, and his brother Cooler felt the darkness increasing around them and, with a mixture of amazement and concern, headed toward the epicenter of the threat. Something's not right. The darkness in this place is getting denser. Whatever it is, we cannot let it threaten Thraxis Nocturne. Let's investigate. The warriors moved nimbly across the gloomy terrain, advancing towards the source of the darkness. As they got closer, the atmosphere became heavier, as if the shadow itself wanted to resist their advance. The darkness is different. I feel a strange pressure. I'm not afraid of the dark, but this is unusual. Cooler, stay alert. Understood, Frieza. Let's find out what's going on. Suddenly, a wave of dark energy erupted before them, revealing the shadow creature that was absorbing the darkness of the planet. His twisted figure and malevolent aura were as evident as the threat he posed to Thraxis Nocturne. Warriors of this planet, his darkness feeds me. Soon I will be unstoppable. We won't let you destroy Thraxis Nocturne. Get ready, creature. The warriors went on the attack each unleashing their unique power against the Dark Entity. Turles unleashed his evil aura, releasing bursts of destructive energy. Bardock channeled his Saiyan fury into powerful blows, while Raditz and Cooler coordinated their attacks to create a symphony of destruction, Frieza intensifying the struggle. This creature doesn't know who he's up against. Your resistance is useless. Each blow only increases my power. The shadow creature, powered by the darkness of Thraxis Nocturne, absorbed attacks with defiant ease. Each impact seemed to strengthen rather than weaken it, plunging the warriors into the disturbing reality that they were facing an enemy that fed on its own darkness. It's not working. He's getting stronger and stronger. We need to change our strategy. We can't let it absorb all the darkness on the planet. While the warriors struggled to find an effective strategy, the shadow creature, with its distorted laughter, continued to absorb the darkness, becoming more and more powerful. The Battle of Thraxis Nocturne's survival was at its most critical, and the warriors knew that they had to find a solution before the dark entity became invincible. The dark aura released by the shadow creature enveloped the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne, gradually weakening them. The warriors struggled to stay on their feet as the entity's malevolent energy infiltrated their bodies, obscuring their vital forces. This is it. Too much. I can't let that defeat us like this. The warriors, despite their bravery, were overcome by the darkness emanating from the aura of the shadow creature. At that critical moment, when hope seemed to be fading, a heavenly light pierced the shadows. Owamo and Ewin the angels, charged with protecting Thraxis Nocturne, arrived on the battlefield. The darkness emanating from this creature is breathtaking. 
We cannot allow it to take over this planet. Time to show these warriors how to fight true darkness. The angel spread his wings, and together with the God of Destruction, they advanced towards the shadow creature, his presence radiating a luminosity that defied the malevolent nature of the dark aura. As it approached, the dark entities sensed the arrival of divine beings and turned to face the new threat. <laughs> More insignificant beings! His light will be devoured by my darkness! Don't underestimate the power of light! Darkness cannot resist the true essence of creation! Awamo extended his hand, and a purifying light enveloped the battlefield, counteracting the dark effect of the creature's aura. Ewen, on the other hand, deployed the energy of destruction, creating a perfect balance between light and darkness. The shadow creature, for the first time, felt the pressure of forces that it could not easily absorb or resist. The conflict took a turn, and the battle became more intense as the angel and god of destruction faced the dark entity with a unique combination of light and destruction. The real struggle starts now! We'll protect Thrax's Nocturne from the darkness you represent! The fight between the angels and the shadow creature reached impressive levels, with bursts of energy illuminating the dark planet of Thrax's Nocturne. Meanwhile, the warriors, freed from the debilitating effects of the Dark Aura, watched the fight, hoping that their planet would not be destroyed. In the dark skies of Thraxus Nocturne, the stage was transformed into a cosmic battlefield, where divine light and malevolent darkness collided in an epic confrontation. Awamo and Ewin, the guardians of this planet, displayed their celestial power with a grace and precision that defied description. The glow of the purifying light emanating from Ewen and Awamo spread across the space, illuminating the shadows that the shadow creature was trying to grasp. Ewen and Awamo's every move was a ballet of divine energy, as they gracefully dodged the dark attacks encountered with unstoppable force. Awamo's wings shone with a resplendent light, like stars in the night, as he invoked the very essence of creation to repel the dark forces rising up against him. By his side, Ewen radiated an imposing presence, with his penetrating gaze fixed on the creature as it defying the darkness itself. The shadow creature, on the other hand, was fighting with an impressive ferocity, trying to resist the overwhelming power of Ewen and Awamo. Their dark attacks were launched like ravenous shadows, seeking to consume the divine light that surrounded them. However, every attack was countered by the impenetrable force of Ewen and Awamo, who remained firm in their purpose to protect the planet. The clash between light and darkness created a symphony of cosmic energy, with flashes of light and bursts of energy illuminating the firmament. The light will always prevail over the darkness! Your power is formidable, but it cannot resist the purity of creation! You can't stop me! I'm the very embodiment of darkness! Darkness can be powerful, but the real strength lies in balance, and we represent that balance. Ewan and Owamo continued to deploy their energy with amazing precision, creating light barriers that repelled the attacks of the shadow creature. Every movement of Ewan and Owamo was imbued with a divine elegance and grace while the creature struggled with a desperate ferocity. Our mission is to protect the harmony of the universe, and that includes protecting this planet from your darkness! You can't stop me! I'm inevitable! The shadow creature launched waves of dark energy, but Ewan and Awamo easily repelled them, maintaining an opposing presence in the midst of battle. Every blow of Ewan and Awamo resonated with the force of creation, while the creature struggled more and more desperately. The darkness can be a challenge, but our determination's unwavering. We'll not let you destroy this planet. Your power may be formidable, but it cannot equal the eternal light of the universe. The battle continued with Ewen and Owamo and the shadow creature facing off in an epic clash between light and dark. In the midst of the struggle, Father Zeno silently watched from his kingdom perceive the magnitude of the conflict. With an imperceptible gesture, he decided to intervene, taking Ewen and Awamo to a mental plane where they could confront the shadow creature in a terrain beyond the physical. In a flash of dazzling light, Awamo and Ewen were transported to an ethereal realm, where the laws of the universe twisted and blurred. Where are we, Ewen? We have entered the realm of the mind, a place where reality is molded according to the will of the observer. 
Here, the real battle be fought in the deepest corners of our being. While Awamo and Ewan were transported to a mental plane by Father Zeno, the shadow creature continued its fierce assault against the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne. Turles, Bardock, Raditz, Frieza, and Cooler, the most powerful warriors on the planet, rose up against the darkness that threatened to consume their home. The shadow creature, imbued with a dark and malevolent aura, hovered over them with an overwhelming presence. He distorted his energy, enveloping everything around him, tearing reality itself apart, and threatening to plunge the planet into an abyss of chaos. We won't let you destroy our home, shadow monster. We the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne are not afraid of the dark. We have faced much greater dangers than you, creature. We will fight together to protect our world. The shadow creature launched a powerful dark attack towards the warriors, but they responded with relentless ferocity. Turles, his eyes shining with determination, unleashed a shower of destructive energy, summoning the very essence of nature to channel it in a torrent of energetic attacks. Their powerful attacks cut through the darkness with devastating precision, creating dazzling explosions that lit up the planet's night sky. Bardock, with his fiery key and indomitable spirit, channeled his energy into a powerful attack. His fists were burning with a searing intensity as he launched a concentrated burst of energy towards the shadow creature, challenging its strength with its own. Bardock's attack resonated with the determination of an invincible warrior, willing to give everything for the protection of his world. Raditz and Cooler, united in battle, joined in a coordinated assault on the shadow creature. With fluid and coordinated movements, they launched bursts of energy from different angles, creating a barrier of attacks that surrounded their enemy. The shadow creature struggled to defend itself against the combined onslaught of the two powerful warriors, but its resistance was challenged by the determination and skill of Raditz and Cooler. Meanwhile, Frieza, with his golden form glowing with a golden aura, was preparing to unleash his full power against the shadow creature. His eyes shone with a cold and calculated determination as he focused his energy on a devastating attack. With a graceful and precise movement, Frieza unleashed a burst of golden energy that swirled with unparalleled destructive power, threatening to envelop the shadow creature in a mantle of fire and destruction. The battle escalated as the warriors of Thraxis Nocturne bravely faced the darkness that threatened their world. Every blow, every burst of energy, echoed through space, creating a spectacle of destruction and determination. Meanwhile, on the mental plane, Awamo and Ewin were engaged in a metaphysical struggle against Father Zeno, an omnipotent entity whose presence radiated an aura of indescribable power. Ewan and Awamo, aware of the gravity of the situation, desperately sought the intervention of Father Zeno to counter the threat of the shadow creature. However, to their surprise, Father Zeno solemnly informed them that they could not intervene directly, since the balance of the universe had to be kept intact even in times of crisis. Awamo and Ewan, although unhappy with Father Zeno's decision, understood the importance of respecting the laws of the cosmos. With determination, they plunged even deeper into the metaphysical struggle, using all their ingenuity and power to find a solution to the crisis unfolding in Thraxis Nocturne. As the confrontation on the mental plane reached its climax, Awamo and Ewan found themselves face to face with the imposing Father Zeno. His figure radiated an indisputable authority, but also an aura of mystery that aroused restlessness in the Ewan and Awamo. Awamo, with his usual serenity, broke the tense silence that filled the ethereal space. Father Zeno, he began in a firm but respectful tone, could it be you that were you the one who sent the shadow creatures to destroy the planets? Father Zeno, with an unflappable expression, nodded slowly. I did it for the good of the universe, he replied calmly. Although his voice resonated with the power that shook Ewan and Awamo, sometimes drastic measures must be taken to preserve the cosmic balance. Ewan, with a flash of indignation in his eyes, could not contain himself anymore. But that doesn't justify the chaos and destruction you've unleashed, he exclaimed, his voice echoing with unshakable determination. There are other ways to restore balance without resorting to violence and darkness. Father Zeno observed the god of destruction and his angel with a penetrating gaze, as if he were evaluating their words and their posture. Your compassion is admirable, but sometimes it's necessary to sacrifice a few pieces to save the entire board, he said in an enigmatic tone. 
Awamo and Iwin exchanged determined glances. Although they respected Father Zeno's authority, they knew that they had to follow their own principles and convictions. With courage, they prepared to challenge the omnipotent being in front of them, willing to fight for what they believed was right, even if it meant facing the divinity itself. The air on the mental plane was charged with tension, as Awamo and Iwin prepared to face Father Zeno. Their divine auras collided in a show of titanic forces, as Iwin and Awamo prepared to challenge the supreme being in front of them. Awamo, with his heavenly book in hand, looked at Father Zeno with determination. Father Zeno, although we respect your authority, we cannot allow you to continue with this destruction, he stated firmly. We'll fight for peace and balance in the universe, even if it means standing up to you. Father Zeno, with an impenetrable calm, nodded in recognition. Your courage is admirable, but you will not be able to stop me. He replied calmly, The fate of the universe is in my hands, and I'll do whatever it takes to preserve its balance. Without further words, the battle began with a burst of divine energy. Awamo unleashed his celestial power, summoning rays of light that he threw against Father Zeno, while he went through waves of energy with determination. However, Father Zeno showed impressive resilience, deflecting every attack with surprising ease. Well guys, this is all for today's chapter. I hope you liked it and it was to your liking. Now don't forget to leave your powerful like, Supreme God level, comment, and subscribe. Now without further ado, see you in a new video. Until next time. Well guys, this is all for today's chapter. I hope you liked it and it was to your liking. Now don't forget to leave your powerful like, Supreme God level, comment, and subscribe. Now without further ado, see you in a new video. Until next time. Oh,